policy toward Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Saudi Arabia. And you can see the Base Closure and Realignment Commission hearings for Ohio, Oregon, and Washington beginning at 8 p.m. And C-SPAN 3 History devotes the day to programs on the Gulf War and Saddam Hussein. That's on C-SPAN 3 beginning at 10 a.m. Eastern. Today, Major League Baseball suspended Baltimore's Rafael Palmero for 10 days, citing steroid policy violation. The Orioles' first baseman denied ever using steroids during a House hearing last March. Here's a look at those proceedings, also including players Jose Canseco, Mark McGuire, and Sammy Sosa, and baseball management. It's about 5 hours and 35 minutes. As I noted in my opening statement this morning, the committee's primary goal in this inquiry is to break the vicious cycle of growing steroid use that begins at the professional level and inevitably, it seems, trickles down to college and high school sports. Mr. Waxman and I believe our oversight, which begins but does not end today, can help break that cycle and convince the 500,000 high school students using steroids today that they are making a big mistake. But we can't do this alone. After all, there is a cause and effect here. Steroid use becomes legitimized in large part because young people emulate star athletes. So it's going to take stars to combat stars. Today, we're grateful that we have two pillars of the game of baseball ready, willing, and able to take on that charge. We're taking this break in today's hearing to announce the creation of Zero Tolerance, the Advisory Committee on Ending the Use of Performance Enhancing Drugs in Sports. While membership on this task force is evolving and names are sure to be added in coming days and weeks, it will initially be co-chaired by Kurt Schilling, and Frank Thomas, uh, Mr. Waxman, and myself. Zero Tolerance will gather information, foster discussion, and provide recommendations to Congress on the next steps. We have invited the NFL, the NBA, and the NHL to recommend participants to this panel, since every prof professional sport needs to let young people know about the dangers of illegal steroid use. We believe the profile Mr. Schilling and Mr. Thomas can lend to this committee will send a strong message in and of itself about the dangers of steroid use. We also believe that their input and leadership will be essential to putting the issue of steroid use at all levels of sports under the microscope. Uh, Mr. Waxman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and I'm pleased to have Mr. Schilling here with us. The reason that uh, Mr. Schilling and Mr. Thomas were invited to be participants in this hearing today is because they have both been outspoken critics of steroid use by baseball players, for which I commend them. And I think it's so important that they've taken the position they have. And I'm pleased that uh, they are going to be uh, testifying. Uh, uh, in one case, uh, Mr. Thomas, by remote control, and Mr. Schilling here with us uh, today. I'm pleased that they are here and uh, announcing as well the fact that they will be a part of an advisory group. This will serve a very, very important purpose as we uh, move along to try to figure out how we can best um, stop steroid use by, by uh, sports figures and, more importantly, uh, the children who emulate them. Thank so you. I want to commend uh, both of them for their uh, presence, uh, willing to participate, and the uh, committee that they are going to be part of. Thank um, you very much. Mr. Waxman, and before we start the formal hearing, uh, Again, uh, Mr. Schilling and Mr. Thomas were invited today because they have been outspoken in their opposition to steroids in professional sports. And Mr. Schilling, before you do your prepared testimony under oath, would you like to say anything? Well, yes. <laughs> okay. We are happy to have you as part of this, and we just want to say thank you very much. And to Mr. Thomas, the same thing. Thank you very much. Okay. We will be ready to uh, move in with uh, ready, ready to bring in the next panel. You can get it. You want to just go well, he's good, yeah. Let's get him in. Bring them all in. You can bring them all in. Swear them in. Yeah. Swear them in.
to swear each member in before they testify individually. Um, Jim Sharp will be reading Mr. Sosa's statement. I'll start. Uh, we have a very distinguished panel here, obviously, in front of us. Mr. Jose Canseco, the former member of the Oakland Athletics and Texas Rangers. Mr. Sammy Sosa, current member of the Baltimore Orioles and former Chicago Cub, accompanied by his interpreter. Mrs. Patricia Rossell, and also Jim Sharp, who will be reading his opening statement. Uh, Mr. Mark McGuire, former member of the Oakland Athletics and St. Louis Cardinals. Mr. Rafael Palmero, current member of the Baltimore Orioles and former Texas Ranger. And Kurt Schilling, current member of the Boston Red Sox. And we have Mr. Frank Thomas, the current member of the Chicago White Sox, appearing by video conference. Um, Mr. Conseco, uh, we'll swear you in first if you'd rise with me and raise your right hand. You solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. Um, it's mandatory. Do you wish to make an opening statement? Okay. We're going to just go down. Each one of you make an opening statement, and then we'll open up for questions. So, oh, sorry about that. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, thank you. Thank um, you. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, distinguished guests, my name is Jose Canseco, and for 17 years I played professional baseball. I am humbled by the opportunity to appear before you today. Never in my wildest dreams could I have imagined that my athletic ability and love for America's game will lead me to this place and the subject that has brought me before this committee. When I decided to write my life story, I was aware that what I revealed about myself and the game I played for a majority of my life would create a stir in the athletic world. I did know that my, my revelations would reverberate in the halls of this chamber and in the hearts of so many. My heart and condolences go out to those families who lost their children to use of steroids. Today I commit myself to doing everything possible to assist them and conveying to the youth of America the dangers that using steroids will bring. After this hearing, I would be happy to work with them in whatever way I can to help convey to the youth of America the message that steroid use is unnecessary to be a great athlete and that they are harmful, harmful to use to those who take them. When first contacted by the committee, I was willing to cooperate in all aspects of the investigation. Unlike others, I have never refused to appear before this committee and assist them in this endeavor. However, due to the fact that I am on probation in Florida for events unrelated to baseball and steroid use, and due to clear evidence of the overzealous efforts of state prosecutors to make an example of me, I request immunity from this committee. I request immunity from this committee. With immunity, I will be free to answer all questions posed by me, by the committee, without fear of my testimony would affect my probation. Without immunity, I cannot. Thank you very much. It, yeah. it has been represented that this committee has been called to get to the bottom of steroid use in baseball. It has been said that this meeting is not about prosecution or individual use. If that were true, Granting immunity to me should not be an issue. Although I have nothing to hide, and although my answers to your questions will be helpful in resolving uncertainties and issues facing this committee, because of my fear of future prosecution for probation violations or other unrelated charges, I cannot be totally candid with this committee. That when appropriate, I will invoke the protections offered me by the Fifth Amendment. This is unfortunate that a committee chose not to grant me this request 
especially since I have been the only player, a member of baseball, who did not fight to request appear here today. It is unfortunate the committee has made this decision as we will not be able to fully investigate the steroid issue without all testimony and the issue will continue to plague the sport. Thank you for asking me to appear. I will try and answer every question that may be posed to me. My committee and help address this problem. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, Mr. Consego, you are appearing voluntarily. And secondly, uh, note that uh, we did tried to get uh, immunity from, I talked to the Attorney General about it. And we were not unable to get it in the time schedules, unfortunately. But uh, we thank you for your statement. Um, Mr. Sosa, um, you'll be next. Would you rise with me and raise your right hand as well as your attorney and your interpreter? <coughs> you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And thank you very much. If you have any opening statement, the committee would be happy to entertain it. Mr. Sharp, I understand you're going to read it for Mr. Sosa. You need to hit your button. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Move it close to you there. Congressman uh, Waxman and uh, members of the committee, my name is Jim Sharp and I represent Mr. Sosa. And I appreciate uh, the departure from the norm permitting me to read his statement. Keep moving the microphone a little closer. It's there. There, there you go. How's that? Better? Uh, statement of Mr. Sammy uh, Sosa. Good afternoon, members of the committee. I understand that people have said that steroids are a big problem in professional baseball and that it is trickling down to our children. I am here to offer my testimony in the hope that it will assist the committee in remedying this problem. I grew up in San Pedro in the Dominican Republic with four brothers and two sisters. My father passed away when I was seven years old. We sold oranges and shined shoes to get by. Early on, I displayed a talent for baseball, and when I was 16, I left home and signed with the Texas Rangers. I played in the minor leagues for four years before I played in my first major league game when I was 20 years old. Playing at that level is very difficult, especially for someone as young as I was. I had to fight for everything, and that meant working out harder than the next guy, lifting a few more reps than the last guy. It meant spending more time in the batting cages and less time in the clubs. Everything I heard about steroids and human growth hormones is that they are very bad for you, even lethal. I would never put anything dangerous like that in my body, nor would I encourage other people to use illegal performance enhancing drugs. To be clear, I have never taken illegal performance enhancing drugs. I have never injected myself or had anyone inject me with anything. I have not broken the laws of the United States or the laws of the Dominion, uh, Dominican Republic. I have been tested as recently as 2004 and I am clean. I support testing professional athletes for illegal performance enhancing drugs. Because rigorous testing is new to baseball, the initial reaction of many players was to bristle at the perceived invasion of privacy. But if more testing is what it takes to help clean up the sport, I am behind it. In light of recent scandals and serious public health problems, we players need to commit to doing whatever it takes to regain our credibility as athletes and members of the community. I do a lot of charity work for young people. I am genuinely committed to their welfare. I am willing to work with you and the Congress as a whole to educate kids and young athletes about these serious issues. Education, of course, starts in the home, but we baseball players can help by speaking out against the use of illegal performance enhancing drugs. To the extent that I can help in these efforts, I am anxious to do so. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And if you will indulge me at this point, he would just like to say a few words. That would be fine. Just make sure the microphone's in front of him there. Thank you, Mr. Sosa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I was uh, back there in the room, and I was watching in TV the two families that lost the two kids. And it uh, uh, really shocked me. And break my heart. I want to send the sympathy to those family that uh, got to go through that situation. And, uh, you know, the, the quicker we can uh, resolve this problem, esteroid, which is bad for kids, uh, you know, I'm willing to work with you guys and do the best that I can to stop that. I just want to say that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. McGuire, welcome. You want to rise with me and raise your right hand? Tell me swear the testimony you're about to give me the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. 
Mr. McGuire, thank you very much for being with us today. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, thank you for having me. My name is Mark McGuire. I played the game of baseball since I was nine years old. I was privileged to be able to play 15 years in the major leagues. I even had the honor of representing my country in the 1984 Olympic baseball team. I love and respect our national pastime. I will do everything in my power to help the game, its players, and fans. <clears throat> First and foremost, my heart goes out to every parent whose son or daughter were victims of steroid use. I hope that these hearings can prevent other families from suffering. <clears throat> I admire the parents who had the courage to appear before the committee and warn the dangers of steroid use. My heart goes out to them. When I was lucky enough to secure my last major league contract, one of the first things I did was establish a foundation and donate three million dollars of my own money to support abused children. <clears throat> I applaud the work of the committee in exposing this problem so that the dangers are clearly understood. There has been a problem with steroid use in baseball. Like any sport, where there is pressure to perform at the highest level, and there has been no testing to control performance-enhancing drugs, problems develop. It is a problem, and that needs to be addressed. Most importantly, every little leaguer, pony league, high school, college player needs to understand that performance-enhancing drugs of any kind can be dangerous. I will use whatever influence and popularity that I have to discourage young athletes from taking any drug that is not recommended by a doctor. What I will not do, however, is participate in naming names and implicating my friends and teammates. I retired from baseball four years ago. I live a quiet life with my wife and children. I've always been a team player. I have never been a person who spread rumors or said things about teammates that could hurt them. I do not sit in judgment of other players, whether it deals with their sexual preference, their marital problems, or other personal habits, <clears throat> including whether or not they use chemical substance. That has never been my style, and I do not intend to change this just because the cameras are turned on. Nor do I intend to dignify Mr. Conseco's book. It should, be, it should be enough that you consider the source of the statements in the book, and that many inconsistencies and contradictions have already been raised. I've been advised that my testimony here could be used to harm friends and respected teammates, or that some ambitious prosecutor can use convicted criminals who would do and say anything to solve their own problems and create jeopardy for my friends. Asking me or any other player to answer questions about who took steroids in front of television cameras will not solve the problem. If a player answers no, he simply will not be believed. If he answers yes, he risks public scorn and endless government investigations. My lawyers have advised me that I cannot answer these questions without jeopardizing my friends, my family, and myself. I intend to follow their advice. It is my understanding that Major League Baseball and the Players Union have taken steps to address the steroid issue. If these policies need to be strengthened, I would support that. I appreciate the difficult job you have as congressmen and congresswomen 
and will use this opportunity to dedicate myself to this problem. I am directing my foundation <clears throat> to concentrate its efforts to educate children regarding dangers, dangers of performance enhancing drugs. I am also offering to be spokesman for Major League Baseball and the Players Association to convince young athletes to avoid dangerous drugs of all sorts. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. McGuire. Mr. Palmero. Tell me swear the testimony you're about to give to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for being with us today. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. My name is Rafael Palmero, and I am a professional baseball player. I'll be brief in my remarks today. Let me start by telling you this. I have never used steroids, period. I do not know how to say it any more clearly than that. Never. The reference to me in Mr. Canseco's book is absolutely false. I am against the use of steroids. I don't think athletes should use steroids, and I don't think our kids should use them. The point of view is one, unfortunately, that is not shared by our former colleague, Jose Canseco. Mr. Canseco is an unashamed advocate for increased steroid use by all athletes. My parents and I came to the United States after fleeing the communist tyranny that still reigns over my homeland of Cuba. We came seeking freedom, knowing that through hard work, discipline, and dedication, my family and I could build a bright future in America. Since arriving to this great country, I have tried to live every day of my life in a manner that I hope has typified the very embodiment of the American dream. I have gotten to play for three great organizations, the Chicago Cubs, the Texas Rangers, and the Baltimore Orioles. And I have been blessed to do well in a profession I love. That blessing has allowed me to work on projects and with charities in the communities where I live and play. As much as I have appreciated the accolades that have come with a successful career, I am just as honored to have worked with great organizations like the Make-A-Wish Foundation, Shoes for Orphan Souls, and the Lena Pope Home of Fort Worth. The League and the Players Association recently agreed on a steroid policy that I hope will be the first step to eradicating these substances from baseball. Congress should work with the League and the Players Association to make sure that the new policy now being put in place achieves the goal of stamping steroids out of the sport. To the degree an individual player can be helpful, perhaps as an advocate to young people about the dangers of steroids, I hope you will call on us. I, for one, am ready to heed the call. Mr. Chairman, I think the task force is a great idea to send the right message to kids about steroids. If it is appropriate, I would like to serve with Mr. Schilling and Mr. Thomas. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Palmero. Mr. Schilling. Thank you very much. Solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Um, um, we have we have votes on. So if members have to feel they have to leave uh, to go to vote and come back, uh, we have three votes. I'm going to try to get these the testimony in of Mr. Schilling and Mr. Thomas and get over there. If we stay as a block, I think they'll hold. The vote. Mr. Schilling, you've been asked here today because you've been an outspoken opponent of steroid use in professional sports, and we're happy to see, and it looks like we have some people that want to help you in that regard, and thank you very much. Thank you. Chairman Davis, Congressman Waxman, members of the committee, and other distinguished guests and invitees. Nearly two weeks ago, I had the extreme honor of standing on the west lawn of the White House alongside my teammates and other members of the Boston Red Sox World Championship team to accept the congratulations of President Bush and Vice President Cheney. Following that, my team made a visit to Walter Reed Hospital here in Washington, D.C. During that visit, my teammates and I had the extreme honor of meeting and visiting with the heroic men and women serving this country's great armed forces. As a son of a man who served almost two decades in the United States Army, as a member of the 101st Airborne, with a brother who served in Vietnam, a cousin that served in the U.S. Navy aboard the USS Carl Vincent, and another cousin who recently finished his service in the United States Army as a member of the Rangers, Green Berets, and finally the Delta Force. I think that visit, with absolutely no disrespect to our esteemed president and vice president, was the highlight of many of our trips and some of our lives. 
I believe that visit made my teammates and I aware of how fortunate we are to live in this country and how fortunate we are we were able to bring joy that afternoon to those courageous service people just because we were Major League Baseball players. Being a professional baseball player has put me in a position to try to bring awareness to certain issues and causes that affect so many people in our great country. For example, my recognition as a player has enabled me to bring an increase in awareness to the terrible disease known as, known as ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease, which afflicts some 30,000 Americans at any one time, and to act as an advocate to try to find a cure for the disease. My position as a player, along with the dedication of my wife Shonda, a cancer survivor, has enabled the two of us to bring awareness to the terrible problem that is skin cancer or melanoma. Our foundation tries to educate young Americans on the dangers of the exposure to the sun. In fact, at this moment, a bill has passed the Arizona Senate and is awaiting a vote by the House of Representatives that would mandate that all children be taught sun safety in school, the first such mandate anywhere in the United States. My hope is that this hearing results in an increased awareness of steroids and their inherent danger to America's youth. I understand from the invitation I received to appear before this committee that my presence has been requested because I have been outspoken on this issue. I am honored to be co-chairman on an advisory committee tasked with putting together recommendations on how to prevent steroid usage among young people. I recognize that professional athletes are role models for many of the youth in this country. Most athletes take this role very seriously and I hope through my appearance here that I am conveying my seriousness and understanding of the issue. While I don't profess to have the medical expertise to adequately describe the dangers of steroid use, I do believe I have the expertise to comment on whether steroids are necessary to excel in athletics. I think it is critical to convey to the youth who desire to excel in sports that steroids are not the answer, that steroids are not necessary in order to excel in any athletic event, and that success is achieved through hard work, dedication, and perseverance. I also hope that by being here, I can raise a level of awareness on several other fronts. First, I hope the committee recognizes the danger of possibly glorifying the so-called author scheduled to testify today or by indirectly assisting him to sell more books through his claim that what he was doing is somehow good for this country or the game of baseball. A book which devotes hundreds of pages to glorifying steroid usage and which contends that steroid usage is justified and will be the norm in the country in several years is a disgrace, was written irresponsibly and sends exactly the opposite message that needs to be sent to kids. The allegations made in that book, the attempts to smear the names of players, both past and present, having been made by one who for years vehemently denied steroid use, should be seen for what they are, an attempt to make money at the expense of others. I hope we come out of this proceeding aware that we are dealing with when we talk about that so-called author and that we not create a buzz that results in young athletes buying the book and being misled on the issues and dangers of steroids. I must also tell you, members of the committee, that I hope that a result of this hearing there is, awareness, there is a better awareness of the steroid program recently implemented by Major League Baseball and its Players Association. That program, though certainly not perfect, and I dare say there is no such thing as a perfect testing program, is a substantial step in the right direction that appears from initial, from initial statistics to be having the desired effect. That is removing steroids from the game of baseball. Statistics have shown that from the 2003 to the 2004, the number of players using steroids in the major leagues has gone from 5 to 7 percent to 1.7 percent. In fact, in yesterday's New York Times, it was reported there were 96 positive tests during the 2003 testing period. In 2004, that number saw a dramatic decrease as 12 players tested positive. I see that as progress. I see that as positive. It troubles me when I hear the program being identified as a joke, a travesty, a program not designed to rid baseball of steroids. I think those numbers show this to be a meaningful program, one that is working, and steroid usage is dropping. The Players Association, in an unprecedented move, reopened the collective bargaining agreement for the sole purpose of strengthening drug testing procedures and its penalties. You may view that reopening of an agreement as a non-issue or one of minimal consequences, but we didn't. It appears that the main complaint about the current program revolves around the current penalties for being caught or failing a test. It is my view as a 19-year veteran of professional baseball that there will be no system of suspensions or discipline that can be implemented that will stand up to or match the agreement made by the players that positive test results will be made public, subjecting the player to public humiliation and labeling as a steroid user or a cheater. Given the intense media coverage that now permeates professional sports, there is no doubt in my mind that any player who is caught after this program has been implemented will, for all intents and purposes, have his career blacklisted forever. When a player's suspension is over, he may be able to lose the label of a player who is under suspension, but I am convinced he will never lose the label of a steroid user. While not a part of my original prepared statement, I think it is important to address the issue that has arisen with respect to the public disclosure of test results under the current testing program. It is my belief that the positive test results will be made public, and it is the public disclosure which constitutes the real teeth of the testing program as far as I'm concerned. 
When I learned upon my arrival in Washington yesterday that there was some question about public disclosure, I looked into the public disclosure issue because of my beliefs. Based on that, I am still of the belief that positive test results will be made public. And I know for a fact that 98.3% of the players who tested clean want the results to be made public because they know the key to the elimination of steroids in pub is a public recognition of who the cheaters are. Members of the committee, do I believe steroids are being used by Major League Baseball players? Yes. Past and present testing says as much. Do I believe we should continue to test and monitor steroid usage in Major League Baseball? Absolutely. In fact, in that regard, I believe the message has been heard by players and that serious, positive, forward-thinking steps have been taken on the issue. I urge the committee to focus its efforts in that direction as well as and not dwell on what may have occurred in the past. I also urge the committee to not make this process just about baseball. Steroids and supplement usage appears to not be a baseball problem, but a society problem. Everywhere you look, we are bombarded by advertising of supplements and feel-good medications. I urge you to evaluate the way in which these products are manufactured and, more importantly, the way in which they are marketed. If we are going to send a message to the young athlete and steroid use is bad and that steroids are not necessary to achieve success, you cannot allow the message to be drowned out by the manufacturers advertising to the contrary. If the government thought enough of, the America, uh, uh, thought enough of American youth to rally against the tobacco industry and its advertising to our youth, why should the supplement industry be any different? I cannot conclude my statement without expressing my admiration to the Hootens and the Garibaldis for appearing here today, and I extend my deepest sympathy to each of, their, to each of them for their loss. As a father of four children, I cannot begin to imagine the pain they must be suffering. To the Hootens and Garibaldis, uh, uh, I want to say this. Having been appointed to, uh, as a co-chairman on the advisory committee, tasked with educating our youth about the dangers of steroid usage, I would welcome their input in helping the committee move forward. Uh, thank you for your attention, and thank you for the chance to speak. Thank, thank you very much, much, Mr. Schilling. Uh, Mr. Thomas, are you with us? Can, do, we have, do we have an audio out to, to Mr. Thomas? What I'm going to do, we're in the middle. Can you hear us, Mr. Thomas? I'm here. Can I swear you in? You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. And as you know, we invited you here because you've been an outspoken opponent of, of uh, steroids in Major League Sports. Uh, do you wish to make any opening statement? We thank you for joining the task force and, and co-chairing it with Mr. Schilling. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. My name is Frank Thomas, and I'm a baseball player for the Chicago White Sox, a team I'm proud to have been part of since joining Major League Baseball since 1990. First of all, Mr. Chairman, let me say that as an outspoken critic of steroids, I would like to work with the committee, Major League Baseball, and the Players Association to warn everyone, especially young people, about the dangers of performance-enhancing drugs. Steroids are dangerous, and the public should be educated about them. And in particular, parents should make sure their children are aware that steroids can be bad for their health. I also believe the League and the Players Association have done the right thing by reopening our collective bargaining agreement and strengthening our policy on drug testing. I support this new policy as a very good first step in eliminating steroid use for the sport I love. I have been a Major League Baseball player for 15 years, and throughout my career, I have never, ever used steroids. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and member of the committee. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Thomas. I'm going to recess uh, the meeting right now. I'm going to ask the members to go back. We're in the middle of three votes. We should be back in about 20 minutes. I appreciate your opening statements. If you'd be able to stay for a few questions, I think the committee would want to ask you. But we very much appreciate everybody being here. The committee will be in recess. Members will go back, I think, to, their holding, to the holding room.
Let me, let me start by apologizing for the delay. This, we're not always in, it's like a rain delay in baseball. You can't always predict these things. And we had a series of votes um, on the House floor. So I want to apologize for that. I want to get everybody back. Um, but let me, let me start the questioning so we can move this along while other members are coming in. Mr. Schilling, I'll, I'll, ask, I'll start with you and then I'll ask Mr. Palmera. As I read the Major League Policy, uh, as it sets here, it says the player test positive for a steroid, a 10-day suspension, or up to a $10,000 fine. So under the policy, a suspension is optional, and you could do a fine up to $10,000. It could be less than that. I mean, what, our feeling is it ought to be, with clarity, it ought to be a suspension, because a suspension carries with it the, the, a public acknowledgment. Under the rules as we read them, a fine is not. Do you have any thoughts on that, Mr. Schilling? I, I'm not trying to put you in the middle, but to <laughs> us that sounds a little weak. Well, I, I don't think for a second that there's any question about uh, making names public upon a, a failed test. I, don't, I can't uh, speak at length as to why the, the clause is in there, the or. Um, but I was given the impression, and I'm under the impression, that there will be absolutely no chance for a failed test to not be made public. Okay. That's not what it says, just to let you know, I understand. But, that, but your position and your understanding is that it ought to be made public. I think that's the position of players as a whole. Mr. Primary, you have the same? Well, I, I agree that the, uh, that the players should be suspended. Um, I believe that uh, our policy um, needs to be strong, and I think that we need to give it a chance. But I do believe that the player needs to be suspended. Okay. I mean, that, that's one of the major concerns, and it was a huge surprise to us as it uh, walked through here. Um, Mr. Conseco, let me ask you uh, just a, a question going back. Um, it's your position basically that <clears throat> Major League Baseball knew that there was steroid use going on and for years didn't do anything to stop it? Absolutely, yes. Uh, when, they, when you signed a contract with the team, uh, they, is it your opinion that people knew about the players that they were signing and investigated them given the investment they were making in them? Um, I'm under the impression uh, they even did background checks on them. So in, in all likelihood they would know if a player was taking steroids if they were in what their private lives were because that could jeopardize their ability to perform? I believe so, yes. Okay. And why do you think baseball didn't do anything about this? I guess in baseball at the time, there was a saying, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And um, baseball was coming back to life. Uh, steroids were a part of the game. And I don't think anyone really wanted to take the stance on it. Okay. Um. I wanted to wait till we got some people in the room. Mr. Palmera, I want to thank you for also uh, agreeing uh, to be a representative on the Zero Tolerance of the Advisory Committee on Ending Steroid Use in Sports. I want to thank Mr. Sosa and Mr. McGuire for agreeing to support the efforts of the Advisory uh, Committee as well. It is important that we get all athletes out there publicly on this issue. Um, in the, uh, I'm going to, Mr. Waxman, I'm going to uh, recognize you. I, I appreciate you all being here, Mr. Waxman. Mr. Chairman, before I start with this panel, I, I, I want to acknowledge a third family that's here with us today. That's the family of uh, Efrain Marrero, a 19-year-old kid from California who loved to play football. And he killed himself after falling into the grip of steroids. 
as his mother Brenda has said, steroid killed my son. I understand that his, Efrain's mother, his father Frank and sister Erica are here today. I also understand that they're working with the Garibaldis and Hootons to get the message out about steroid use out to America's youth. And I want to say on behalf of all of us, uh, thank them for coming. Um, on, on the question I want to ask, and I don't know which of you to ask, what I want to know is um, you've seen steroid use in baseball. Uh, You've seen it from inside the clubhouse. Uh, Mr. Palmero, maybe you could be the best to ask, and we'll see what others have to say. Is it something that most of the baseball players knew about? Sir, I have never seen the use of steroids in the clubhouse. Well, how about just that players are using steroids? Excuse me? The fact that players were using steroids, is that something that other players knew? Um, I'm sure that players knew about it. Um, you know, I, I really didn't pay much attention to it. Um, I was focused in what I had to do as, my, as part of my job. Um, well, let me ask Mr. Schilling. Did players know? You, you, you've spoken out against this. Did, did you know that other players were using steroids? I think there was suspicion. I don't think any of us knew. Uh -huh. um, contrary to the claim of, of former players, I think, uh, mm -hmm. while I agree it's a problem, I think the issue was, was grossly overstated by some people, including myself. Um, you, it was uh, I, you I grossly overstated. I absolutely. I, Why uh, did you do that? I think at the time it was it was uh, a very uh, uh, hot situation, and we were all being asked to comment on it. And I think uh, my, my opinion at the time was to go with someone who maybe had a better idea than me, um, but given a chance to reflect, and I made comments to that effect afterwards. When I look back on what I said, I'm not sure I could have been any more grossly wrong. Do you think it's basically a non-problem in baseball? No, absolutely not. I think it's an issue. I think if one person's using, it's a problem. Um, I think the desire to get to, to zero players using is a great goal. I don't know how achievable that is. Uh, Mr. Sosa, did you know that other players were using steroids? Um, to my analysis, I don't know. I you didn't really know. Didn't. Mr. Conseco? Absolutely, yes. Now, you say it so affirmatively, you knew others were doing it, but the others seemed to be vague about it. Was it only where you were playing? Okay, um, I didn't hear you, sorry. Well, what, they seemed to be vague as to whether other players, whether it was known by the players that some players were using steroids. Do you think that there should have been any doubt in anybody's mind that steroids was being used by would you say a large number of right. players? There should have been no doubt whatsoever, none. Well, um, does it stop with ball players? Uh, steroid use has, has, uh, has grown. Do, do you think that the team trainers, the managers, the general managers, and even the owners might have been aware that some players were using steroids? No doubt in my mind, absolutely. So it's not a secret that stayed with just the players. Others knew it in the baseball community. Absolutely. I believe that, yes. Do any of you disagree with that? Mr. Schilling? Disagree with? The what? idea that not only did some baseball players know that others were using it, but that managers and, uh, and other teammates and, uh, and, and the trainers also were aware of it. Again, I think it falls into the same. I, th I think there was a lot of suspicion, a lot of questioning, but I don't think any, unless you were Jose and you were actually using, I don't think you have any firsthand knowledge about who knew. Let me ask this question. Last week, a very respected person uh, in the athletic world and professional sports called me with a suggestion. He said that if we want to dramatically cut the use of illegal steroids by kids, we should pass federal legislation that applies one standard to all major sports, to colleges and high schools, instead of a patchwork of different uh, policies, he suggested taking the Olympic policy and applying that program to everyone. The first violation would result in a two-year suspension, and the second would bring a lifetime ban. Uh, do you think that would be effective? Let me start with uh, Mr. Conseco. I think, in my opinion, the most effective thing right now is would be for us to admit there's a major problem. Um, it's got to start here. And we've got to admit to certain things we've done. 
and change things there. Uh, from what I'm hearing, uh, more or less, I was the only individual in Major League Baseball who used steroids. So that's, <laughs> that's hard to believe. Okay. Mr. Sosa, do you think that we ought to have that gold standard of the Olympic uh, program, zero tolerance? You, 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 you got caught using steroids um, for whatever the sport is, that, that you're suspended for two years, and after that, second offense, you're out. That certainly discourages people in the Olympics. Do you think it would be effective with uh, baseball and other sports as well? Would you uh, push the mic? I can tell you, Mr. Chairman, I don't have too much to tell you. Okay, well, you can think about it. We don't have to get the answer right now. How about you, Mr. McGuire? I don't know, but I think we should find the right standard. Mm -hmm. And do you think the standard that the Baseball Commission is now using is the right standard? I don't know. I'm a retired player. Okay, and you haven't looked carefully at that standard? You haven't looked at it? Correct. No, no. Okay. How about you, uh, Mr. Palmero? Do you think I, if we went to a tougher standard, it would be more effective? I wouldn't have a problem playing under any type of, of standard. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said before, I've never taken it. So if you want to play under the rules of the Olympics, I welcome it. Okay. Um, my time is up, and I hope we'll get another chance for. Okay, Mr. Sweeney. <coughs> Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, welcome all, and thank you. Uh, for your participation. I want to ask a general question of the entire panel with the idea that I'd follow up with a specific. The general question is you've all made very strong statements about your interest in helping us develop some public education process. Um, very briefly, because the time is short, I'd like to hear from each of you what you think the danger is, what's your perception of what's happened out there in the world because of the allegations of steroid use. and. Secondly, what can Major League Baseball and the Players Association do tangibly if you have ideas? And Mr. Schilling, I'll start with you since you're going to chair something that has to more formally answer that question. If you could. Well, I think the inherent danger here is inactivity. I, I, think, I don't think a PSA is going to do it. I think there needs to be some tough legislation mandated on the federal level that affects high school athletics, college athletics, uh, any level of athletics. And I, I do agree. I think if you can come to a one standard, and a blanket standard for everybody uh, that is that is tough and strict and enforceable, there's no question that's the way to go. Mr. Palmero? I do believe that we are role models and uh, we do have a lot of power in what uh, kids listen to and, and uh, the message that we send to them. And I believe that if we do send the right message, uh, we, can, we can help tremendously. Mr. McGuire? Well, I believe that's one of the reasons why I'm here, is to make this a positive thing instead of a negative thing. And I will do everything I can in my power to turn this around from a negative to a positive. Mr. Sosa? Um, I agree with Mr. Maguire. You know, one of the reasons why I'm here is because to stop that. And you know, I think that we can do some more tests. And you know, one way or another, we're here to help. Mr. Conseco? I think, I think the most important thing is going to be awareness here. I mean, uh, it's in the forefront right now. Right now. We're looking at it. Major League Baseball player, whatever comes out of this meeting, will say, wow, you know, we have eyes on us. They're looking at us. We've got to change something. You know, hopefully this, this book I wrote educates people on what's really going on in sports and how, uh, you know, devastating the use is in Major League sports. And no matter what comes out of this, at least we're going to have some type of start, some type of position to say, look, you got to stop this. The owners have got to stop this. Continuing, the players' association have got. Uh, they have got to stop this. Period. I have two questions to follow up. One is that, given its impact, especially with the last panel on uh, scholastic athletics and, and, and kids in this country, do any of you uh, doubt that maybe Major League Baseball, and when I say Major League Baseball, I am including in that the players' association. Don't, don't, don't you think Major League Baseball has some obligation to help pay for that kind of a program because all of those things cost money? Does anyone disagree with that? The I idea that Major League Baseball helps to subsidize such a nation. You're talking about the owners here now, right? Well, I'm, t I'm talking <laughs> about the owners and, and, and possibly the Players Association in conjunction. For the owners, I say yes. The, the principal. <laughs> <laughs> Very well done, Mr. Schilling. When you're done, you can become an agent. My point is baseball has an obligation here. Don't you agree? 
Final question, and I'm going to go into sensitive territory, and I don't, I, I, our intent is not to embarrass anybody here. It's to get to solutions, but I, I have to ask this. We've just established we all agree that this is a public health policy issue. Um, this is not treading on conduct that rises to the level of criminality uh, in past years, but this year it is, and that's the use of uh, steroid precursors and uh, designer steroids and, and, and how prevalent that was in baseball because that is part of a culture. And specifically, Mr. McGuire, I, I have to ask you this question from your statement. In Part 10, you essentially say that the impact on children is devastating. You recognize that and you want people to understand that the use of any performance-enhancing drug can be dangerous. It is um, rather an infamous occurrence that in the year you were, you were breaking the home run record, a bottle of Andro was seen in your, in your locker. My question to you is, your position now says the use of that product, which is now illegal but was not then, how did you get to that point where that was what you were using to prepare yourself to play? And if you could tell this committee how you ended up there, and then I, if I have time left, I'd like to know if other players have similar experiences. Um, I think that would help us understand what you all live in. Well, sir, I'm not here to talk about the past. I'm, talk, I'm here to talk about the positive and not the negative about this issue. Were you ever counseled that uh, precursors or designer steroids um, might have the same impact? I'm not here to talk about the past. Well, Mr. Mr. Right, Mr. Your, your, your I'll just simply say that in order to eliminate and alleviate the kinds of questions that surround the game, we need to understand the okay. game. No. Thank you. Uh, time, gentlemen, time's expired. Gentleman from Baltimore. Yes. Um, first of all, I want to thank all, all of you for being here. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, Mr. Canseco, I, 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 I've been, you know, taking a look at your book, and you said some things that really, uh, you know, I, I hear all of you. I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm listening and I'm trying to, trying to feel good about this hearing. But at the same time, I see you, Mr. McGuire, with almost tears in your eyes when you were talking. I hear everybody saying that now they're willing to come and be the spokespersons to uh, help those families who may be trying to uh, deal with this issue and prevent it in the future. But Mr. Conseco, let me ask you this. You said in your book, and this is in your book, I'm tired of hearing such short-sighted crap from people who have no idea what they're talking about. Steroids are here to stay. That's a fact, I guarantee it. Ster steroids are the future. By the time my eight-year-old daughter, Josie, has graduated from high school, a majority of all professional athletes in all sports will be taking steroids, and believe it or not, that's good news. Help me with that. You sit here one moment talking about how you want to do all these wonderful things to prevent it in the future, but then it sounds like you're saying something almost the opposite in this statement in your book. I, I think that was very much pertaining to two subjects. Number one, if Congress does nothing about this issue, it will go on forever. That I guarantee. Um, and basically, steroids are only good for certain individuals, not good for everyone. I think I specified that in, in previous chapters. If you medically need it, um, if it is prescribed to you, I, I think those were the things I actually spoke about. So you are against it. You realize it's a federal crime. Is that right? To yes. To use steroids? Yes. And so, so are you now for a zero tolerance policy? Absolutely. Now, we've had, uh, you've made some, some allegations. And as I understand it, both Mr. Schilling, Mr. Thomas, and Mr. Palmaro, and I think Mr. Sosa, have said they never used the substances. Um, uh, is that right, Mr. Sosa? You said that, right? You said you never? Okay. <laughs> is that right? I, I, all right. Now, Mr. McGuire, would you like to comment on that? I didn't, I didn't get a definitive answer. I didn't hear you say anything about it. Now, you don't have to. I just ask. You don't want to comment? Are you taking the fifth? 
I'm not here to discuss the past. I'm here to, to be positive about this subject. I'm trying to be positive, too. But just a few minutes ago, I watched you as right. tears. No, no, no. I, I need to be able to answer my question. Well, the, I, the, I think the gentleman in his opening statement made it clear that uh, he, he, he... Well, I'm, I'm, I'm making a statement. I'm just telling him something. I, I, I listened. I sit here, and I almost got tears in my eyes watching you testify. And, you know, the thing that I guess I'm, I'm curious about is that, you know, it's one thing to, to say that we want to help. It's a whole other thing when those parents are sitting, by the way, directly behind you, and then they wonder, is this real? And I guess, you know, my question is, uh, you said something about your foundation and trying to help out. Tell us exactly what it is you plan for your foundation to do. Uh, well, uh, right now? Yeah, that's I'm talking about the present and the future, as you said. Well, my foundation helps out neglected and abused children. I'm going to redirect it. We have not talked about it, but I'm going to redirect about this subject. And you are you're going to you're willing to be a national spokesman against steroids? See, we've got all these high school kids that are have, are emulating you all. Although you're out of the game now, they still look up to uh, um, McGuire and, uh, and and others. And so you, I think you said you're willing to be a national spokesman. I'd be a great one. So that means you would means you would do it. Be a spokesperson? Yes. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Time Gentlemen's time's expired. Ms. Mil Ms. Miller. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, perhaps just a question for Mr. Kansenko. Uh, and I appreciate all of the panelists uh, coming here today sincerely, but uh, in your book you did admit that you were a, a user, a, an abuser of steroids. And uh, you did suggest that uh, perhaps steroids perhaps were a good thing for players to use. Um, I think you said in your book that if used properly, steroids could help you to live to be 120 years old. Uh, unfortunately, during your playing career, baseball really did not have uh, the testing policy uh, in place against the use of steroids, no uh, testing regime. And, uh, and I also want to applaud you for your testimony today, saying that you're willing to work towards educating our young people about the uh, dangers of steroid. Uh, but uh, could you answer, even if the new random testing policy uh, that the major leagues are putting in place uh, today. If that was in place uh, during your playing career, uh, do you think it would have uh, changed your behavior in regards to steroids, or do you think that the uh, desire to uh, uh, to play better uh, was just so strong that the uh, the standard that is going to be in place today is going to eliminate steroid use in uh, Major League Baseball? I don't know exactly how the policy for Major League Baseball is structured right now, but I've heard it's a complete joke. Um, obviously, if, if it were a proper system, um, completely educating athletes and so forth, I truly believe that no major league player would do steroids. Absolutely not. It's my understanding that the new policy is a random uh, uh, test once, uh, one, at least one time during the season for each player. So, uh, and I suppose we'll have some additional questions for the next panel on that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's my only question. You have, if you have some time left, if you yield to Mr. Burton, he has a question. I'll yield to the gentleman. I, 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 Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. I don't have a question. I'd just like to say that uh, it's evident from this hearing that a lot more needs to be done to make sure that uh, not only the baseball world but the entire world of athletics knows that these uh, kinds of uh, drugs need to be outlawed. And I'd just like to say I understand the commissioner has uh, started to move in the, in the right direction, but it ha evidently hasn't moved fast enough. So rather than me questioning uh, the players who are here today uh, or, or uh, uh, pound on this subject anymore, I'd just like to say that I hope the message is very loud and clear from this committee and from the Congress of the United States. We want this stuff stopped in all athletics, not just baseball. And I think you can tell by the tone of my colleagues up here, if, if it doesn't stop, you're going to end up with something that you don't want in the world of athletics, and that is the Congress of the United States doing what you don't do. So do the job. Baseball players whom I have respected since I was a, a kid, go out there and tell the kids, even if you use steroids, tell them this is not the right thing to do. Tell them about the people who've lost their kids because of this misuse of steroids. And if you do that job, if you preach the gospel, 
And if the baseball commissioner and everybody in baseball gets the word out, this will change. You won't have to have Congress legislating. You'll get the job done. But do the job so that we don't have to. And I hope this message goes out loud and clear to people in every athletic endeavor, not just baseball. And if it does, then this uh, hearing, Mr. Chairman, because of you and Mr. Waxman, will be a great benefit to all sport. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. Mr. Lantos? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I increasingly feel a, a feeling of the, of the theater of the absurd unfolding here. We are all interested in the future, but in order to plan a better future in this field, we must look at the past. In every single endeavor, as we plan for the future, unless we learn from the past, it will be a futile endeavor. I am totally disinterested in individual past behavior. Let me make that clear. But there are a few specific questions I would like all of you gentlemen uh, to respond to. Uh, Jim Bunning, uh, our former colleague, testified earlier today, who said that uh, the industry is taking baby steps. Well, baby steps are clearly not adequate when we are facing a major national crisis impacting our young people. That's why we are here. That's why all the media is here. So to pretend that baby steps will solve this problem is ludicrous. So I'd like to ask each of you gentlemen to answer the following questions. You have already said, some of you, that you favor the Olympics formula. Could I ask all of you to say yes or no? It's a much tougher formula much more demanding, with much more severe penalties. Uh, Ms. Schilling, are I, you in favor of it? <clears throat> Excuse me, I would need to see it first. I, I, I wouldn't just give a blanket yes or no. I mean... I are you in favor of much stricter penalties? I'm in favor of allowing the current system to continue to work and where loopholes are found, those loopholes be fixed. I think the testing is doing what it's aimed to do, which is reduce the usage of players, the usage of steroids by players. Ms. Palmeira. I am in favor... I am in favor of eliminating the, prob the problem completely. Well, obviously, the Olympics are internationally recognized, as it has been referred to, as the gold standard. If, in fact, that is the gold standard, would you favor applying it to baseball? I would play under any type of uh, deal that would clean our sport and that would make it a playing level feel for everyone. Thank you. Ms. McGuire. Well, being that I'm retired, I know, but I think that anything that Major League Baseball can do to get rid of this problem and do a positive, positive, put a positive light on this for our children of our future, I think it would be great. Ms. Sosa. Yes, uh, I am favored to the trick Mr. Pensick. Well, I, I truly believe, I'm definitely in favor of it, but I think you have to monitor who's ever issuing this test. Now, the second question I have is, are you in favor of independent testing? Because one of the, the issues that emerged is that unless all testing is done by a totally independent entity, which has nothing to do with the owners, the players, it stands by itself. Would you favor that, Ms. Schilling? Yes. Ms. Palmeira? Yes, sir. Ms. McGuire? I think it would be outstanding. Ms. Sosa? Yes, sir. It's going to be the only way you're going to solve this. Final question. On the assumption that within a reasonable period of time, the industry doesn't clean up its own act, are you in favor of federal legislation, Mr. Schilling? Um, uh, yes. Thank yes. you. Svalmero. I agree. I agree. If that's what it takes, yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Souter. Uh, my first question is to Mr. Uh, Schilling. Um, and my belief is, is that the, uh, all we've seen is, is sampling, and it's not adequate. It's not independent. And it's so full of holes on ephedra and everything else that if it was cheese, it would definitely be Swiss cheese. So clearly the policy needs to be fixed, and I'm disappointed that you don't seem to share that view. But you said earlier, as I understood it, that we went from 5 to 7 percent positive 
down to 1.7, and that's progress. I thought I also heard you say that um, it would be inevitable and the people, this would be public. Um, I haven't heard 5 to 7 percent of the players named as using steroids. I haven't even heard 1.7 percent. Where is the public part? Well, my understanding is that uh, with this new, after the agreement in pl put in place, renegotiated this past uh, couple months, those, those are instituted now. Those previous results are from the last two seasons. The 5 to 7 percent was the number that needed to be met for the testing to be put into effect, the, the different method of testing, which was put into effect last year. Under the uh, previous policy, was anybody suspended for steroids? I can't answer that. Um, we'll ask the baseball. I also wanted to say that the simple way to solve this is the way that um, Mr. Sosa, Mr. Palmero, and you, Mr. Schilling, and Mr. Thomas have said. I am clean. I've been clean. I've taken the test. And I passed the test. This is pretty simple. Uh, and the American people are figuring out who's willing to say that and who isn't. And uh, as, as far as this being about the past, um, that's what we do. This is an oversight committee. If the Enron people come in here and say, well, we don't want to talk about the past, do you think Congress is going to let them get away with that? If when we were doing investigations on the travel office, on Whitewater, if, if President Nixon had said about Watergate when Congress was investigating Watergate, we don't talk about the past. How in the world are we supposed to pass legislation when you're a protected monopoly and all your salaries are paid because you're a protected monopoly? How are we supposed to figure out what our obligations are to the taxpayers if you say we won't talk about the past? I want to praise those people who've come forward uh, and have been in awkward situations before because of peer pressure and said, look, I'm clean, but I'm really disappointed because we have to talk about the past because there isn't any way to address this. And unless there are independent uh, entities doing this, I don't believe that, that it's, this is going to pass the laugh test. I believe we've advanced some today, but we've also gone backwards some today. And this last panel with the Management and Players Association is going to be very critical. Yield back the balance. Thank you, Mr. Owens. I don't want to repeat what my colleague asked before. I just want a clarification. He said that if the industry cannot clean this up, are you in favor of federal legislation? And I think most of you gave a positive answer. I want to go one step further and say baseball is an industry. It is a business. It's our favorite pastime, whatever else. But it also is an industry in the business. And in most instances, we have failed in attempts to have businesses self-regulate themselves. There are a few successes, but very few. Do you think it is possible that self-regulation will solve this problem? Yes, absolutely. You think it is possible? I absolutely think it is. I, I think it is possible, too. Me, too. Yeah, I think it's possible, too. If we work together, yes. <clears throat> My honest opinion, not completely, but because we have brought this to light, it's going to come very close. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. McHenry, any questions? Thank you all for coming here today. I know that it's not an easy situation for any of you. I certainly appreciate the fact that as individuals, you don't like the idea of having to come before Congress and swear an oath. I certainly understand that. Certainly respect your right to, to privacy as individuals. Our hearings today are not about you as individuals. A lot has been made of a book written. A lot has been made of statements that have been made. But it's not about you as individuals. It's the overall societal problem. And you, you mentioned, you all mentioned what these families that testified earlier, the impact it had on you as individuals. But that's a message that your sport, you and your colleagues, are sending in many ways. And so, I have a simple question, and you can answer yes or no, or choose to not answer. That's certainly your right. Is using, or using steroids, the use of steroids, is that cheating? Sure. Yes. I believe it is. That's not for me to determine. For you, is it cheating? Yes or no? That's not for me to determine. 
Mr. Sosa. I think so. I think so, and, and in many ways. I think it also cheats the individual who uses it because eventually, if found out or if come to the forefront, they have to go through this, absolutely. My follow-up question is to Mr. McGuire. You said that you'd like to be a, a spokesman on this issue. What is your message? Okay. My message is that steroids is, is bad. Don't do them. It's a bad message. And I'm here because of that. And I want to tell everybody that I will do everything I can, if you allow me, to turn this into a positive. There's so much negativity set out here. We need to start talking about positive things here. How do you know they're bad? Pardon me? Your message is, coming from professional baseball, would you say that perhaps you've known people that, are, that have taken steroids and, and that you've seen the ill effects on that? Or would your message be that you've seen the direct effects of steroids? Uh, you know, let me just note here that House Rule 11 protects witnesses in the public from the disclosure of defamatory, degrading, or incriminating testimony in open session. House rules in this point are both clear and strict. Um, I think the test, uh, if the testimony tends to defame, degrade, or incriminate, uh, the committee cannot res uh, proceed in open session, and we want to proceed in open session today. So with that in mind, you can choose to answer that or not, Mr. McGuire. Well, Mr. Chairman, respectfully, my question is just about the message that he would carry to the I, I, people. I just wanted to give. give Certainly. Well, I've accepted by my attorney's advice not to comment on this issue. Okay. If you'll go down the line again, I'll ask another question that everyone can answer simply and directly, I would hope. Um, if it's proven that a player has set records while using steroids, should those records stand? Mr. Conseco? It's impossible to measure, I, I, I would guess, what one steroid do, do, does to one player and another player. Um, there is no guideline to trying to say, well, if he hit 60 or 70 home runs because he was on steroids, we're going we're to take away 20, 20 or 25 percent of, of his home runs. It's impossible. Mr. Sosa. It's not up to me. It's not up to me to determine that. I believe that's up to the commissioner. Absolutely not. Thank you for your frank answers. And as members of the player un Players Union, which uh, you all are or were, um, your representatives sat down and negotiated on your behalf about the steroid policy. And part of what we'll hear from the commissioner, I'm sure, and your union representative is uh, the fact, well, from your union representative, that he was empowered to negotiate in certain directions. Did you support uh, the, the old policy, the old policy on steroids? Did you empower your union representative? What was your stance on, on the issue of steroids within your union votes as members of the union? Did you support a more stringent policy? Or did you ask your union representative to limit the policy when it comes to steroids? We can start no, I, I didn't support the old policy. And I, I, uh, as a team, the Diamondbacks made it very clear we didn't support the old policy to the point where we spoke about uh, not taking the tests ourselves to, to force a failed result to, to increase the, the toughness of the policy. And I, I think that that's exactly what happened. Well, since, since there was a new policy in place and it was the first time that we were tested, I was in favor of it. Now, I was aware that we needed to take uh, bigger steps and more steps, and I think that we need to give a chance to this new policy. And if we do need to take more steps, I'm in favor of that also. I've been retired. <laughs> what, when you were a member of the Players Union? There was no policy. Right. And you, well. Gen sir. Gen Gentleman's time's expired. We'll allow the previous question to be answered, but Mr. Sosa, if you want to answer. I really, uh, you know, I don't have the specific no, no, no. question to, you okay. know, to explain it to you. Mr. Kinseka. The policy was never an issue when I was there. Uh, I think the only players that may have been privy to it briefly were uh, members of the Player Association. In other words, each organization had a representative. Uh, 
that would go and represent that team. So as be, be beyond that, no policy was, was ever mentioned or really talked about. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you all. Yes. Gentleman from New York, Mr. Towns. Uh, Thank you very much, um, Mr. Chairman. You know, um, looking back over the rules and the recommendations that have been made, um, I think that we're overlooking the fact that we can only hold the players accountable, but all wrongdoers, including management, trainers, front office, and all should be involved uh, in this if we really want to clean up the uh, situation we now find ourselves in. Uh, let me just go down the line, starting with you, Mr. Schilling. Uh, do you consider yourself a role model? Yes. Definitely. Yes. 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 With that in mind, do you think that maybe posting uh, something in a locker room might remind the person that they should not uh, consider using, being you saying the kind of damage that takes place if a person uses steroids? Uh, for instance, you know, uh, in locker rooms, sometimes they put up, you know, what smoking will do to you and things like that. Do you think this would serve as a deterrent in any way? I'm just trying to figure out what we might be able to do uh, if it's a, a widespread kind of thing. You think that was a sort of scare tactic to no, players? No, I don't. No? I, I'm not sure. I can't answer that. I don't think so. I'm not, I'm not sure. Yes. I think bringing this issue to light is going to be a major deterrent. Um, the players will be talking about this on a daily basis, and they will be aware that there will be a lot of eyes on them, especially Congress. Yeah. See, my concern is, is the young people, you know, the high school ball players and you know, people playing uh, 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 that. I was just wondering if this kind of technique might not, you know, the scared straight kind of thing to show, to show them that uh, if you use, uh, you could end up looking like this at the end of the day. You know, um, and that's the reason why, you know, uh, I was thinking about that for high school uh, players more than uh, professionals. Because my concern is that at that level, they might begin to really use it. And that's a real concern. So what can we do with high schoolers? Any thoughts on that? Any suggestions? Because that, that's the area that I really think we need to focus on a, a great deal. I believe that we can go around the high schools around the country, use our, our names, use our, our who we are, to send the right message, to send the message that st steroids are wrong and they're costing lives every day. Um, I think you need to, I don't, again, I don't think a PSA is going to do it. I think there needs to be some form of drug testing to, to, and there needs to be ramifications to failing a drug test, be it in high school or college. Because until you have to pay a price, I don't think that there's going to be uh, a lot of thought from a 16-year-old about the consequences of using. If a trainer has information about the fact that somebody's using, you know, uh, what should that trainer do? And I'm thinking in terms of in colleges that if you see someone cheating and you tell, if you don't tell, they put you out too. You know, so I'm thinking about the fact that uh, uh, if you have a trainer that's very much aware of the fact that illegal uh, actions are taking place and nobody's doing anything about it. He doesn't do anything about it. So did anything happen to that person? Right down the line, yes or no? I, I'm not sure I, uh, I'm not sure I got the question. Yeah. No, the question is that you have a trainer who might be aware of the fact that somebody's using steroids. And so he knows it, but he just walks around every day and doesn't tell anybody about the fact that this is going on. <coughs> Might be aware or definitely know. I mean, I, I don't, I mean, he might be aware that there's someone using or? Yeah, might be, he has information that somebody's using and does nothing about it. Well, I, I, I think unless you have a verifiable fact, I think you're, you're treading on some dangerous ground. I think we're here because some, of some people that, that uh, loose tongue that, and, and, and said things that I don't believe are entirely true. Mm -hmm. and I think it, it causes a lot more problems than it solves. Right. I think that if the trainer knows for sure, it's his responsibility to make the player aware and educate the player. Yeah, I, I agree with Rafi. I think that'd be a great step. Exactly. 
Mr. Sosa. I agree. I agree with Rafi. I think and it's probably the training or something he should right. say so. Mr. Conseco. Oh, um, I definitely believe and know that they are under the same circumstance as some major league players are under, meaning if they come to the forefront and speak about it, Major League Baseball will do something to them in the sense of maybe blackballing them from the game or, or cause them a lot of problems. Otherwise, there should be some penalties. Yeah. If the trainer does not report it, that he should be penalized? It's a very delicate position he's in. The example I can give you is Let's say one player knows of another player using steroids, but this player is still active. Or, or one player wants to come to the forefront, but he's still active in, in Major League Baseball. Major League Baseball is very, very powerful. And if you act against them or speak out against them, it can cost you your, your livelihood, definitely. Thank you. Gentlemen's, gentlemen's time has expired. Thank, Thank you. you. Ms. Fox. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Candace Miller asked uh, one of the questions that I wanted to ask about whether the, if the policy were in effect uh, years ago, would it have made a difference? But I want to ask another question, and that is, why do you think, and I'll ask each, each player this, why has it taken so long for the league to act on this since it seems to have been so wide the, the, it was so well known that abuse was going on. Why has it taken the league so long to act? Uh, basically, something like a book written about the problems in Major League Baseball had to be done. Absolutely. I, I think it definitely triggered a lot of events. I think it finally made Major League Baseball aware of that, you know, or in the sense of stop covering up what was really going on. I don't really know. I, I'm, I'm not sure. Can you say the question one more time? Why has it taken so long for the league to act, why, uh, to, for professional baseball to act on this issue? There's a policy in effect now. I think it's a very weak policy, but why has it taken so long to institute any policy? I don't know, but this is a great reason why we're here today. Try to fix it. Ma'am, I'm, sure. I'm not sure why it's taking so long. Um, you may have to ask uh, the commissioner and the Donald Field Players Association leader. Oh, I don't know that, <clears throat> um, that it's taken long. Well, there was a policy in place before the book came out. Um, uh, the only thing that's happened, I think, in the last six months is that the policy has changed. Uh, and gotten in some way stronger. Thank you. Thank you. But policy is weaker than the minor league testing at this point, and the minor leagues had it way before. And I think one of the concerns is among professional sports, baseball has been a little bit late coming to the table and maybe a little bit short of where some of the other standards are. That's, that's one of the concerns. You know, obviously, we'll see how this is implemented. There's active testing going on now. But there is a concern, as you can hear from us and some of the other experts, that may maybe it doesn't go far enough. And hopefully uh, this hearing will shine some light on it. And the, bet between the players and the owners, we can come up and close some of these loopholes and make it work. The last thing you want is us making the policy. I guarantee it. We don't do things very well anyway when we get into it. To, uh, we act as a last resort. But there's still a lot of concern, not just that it's late, but that it's not as complete as, as we had hoped it would be. Uh, but your speaking here is, is just very helpful to them. Next uh, is Mr. I think Mr. Kanjorski was next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Conseco, uh, can you tell us, I assume in your book, I didn't read your book, but I assume that you confessed to taking steroids. Is that correct? I think. Um, Yes, in the past I have, yes. Yeah. Well, uh, can you tell us what well, we're trying to get here? W one of the reasons I objected to the use of, use of subpoenas at, that, at this hearing was it highlighted just baseball, just superstars in baseball. And I, I, I've been listening to the examination now, and I'm getting the indication that we want to clean up baseball at the highest level and not looking at the broad application. Could, I want to get to motive. Why did you use steroids? 
Well, there, there are many reasons. Uh, uh, there's a chapter in my book where uh, my mom passed away and I was called in from California. I was playing uh, A ball that year. And um, when, I, when I flew home, she was in the hospital and she was brain dead from an aneurysm. And I, she never had uh, seen me play minor leagues in general. And I promised her I was going to be the best athlete in the world, no matter what it took. I, I definitely got caught up in the whole. Um, would, would it be fair to say that you did it because the motivation was to build your body to be more competitive and ultimately make more money? I don't even, I don't even think the money was an issue at that time. I, I think just becoming uh, the, you know, the best athlete I, I could possibly become. Right. Well, well, have you given a lot of thought that if we had the best damn testing system that baseball could possibly imagine, what type of implication or ramification would that have for all of those hundreds of thousands of high school athletes that we're trying to uh, establish some help for? Uh, it, it, shouldn't we be looking at what we can do for them? And now my next question is, since you obviously favor testing for super athletes, would you favor a universal testing of the highest standard, the Olympic standard, for all athletics, regardless of where they are, and in regardless of what level of schooling that they're in, and regardless of what sex is involved, whether it's male, female, or otherwise? I, I truly believe that at the major league level, everyone knew that there was no steroids at all, and a competitive balance was even. It will trickle down to the minor league level, the high school level, and beyond. Well, but, but is it your idea that we can't do anything about steroids then? No, we, we definitely can. Well, wouldn't it, I'm require, saying that, that wouldn't it require that we have a universal test at all, at all athletes? Because, you know, some kid uh, 16 years old is looking up not only you, he's looking at ball, football players, he's looking at uh, tennis players, he's looking at wrestlers, and, and probably he, he's not doing it for uh, some narcissistic reason, but probably for, for accomplishment and success. I agree, but if you just regulate it at, let's say, the minor league level and then the college level and high school level, and then don't regulate it at the major league level, that no, I'm, be I'm, I'm not suggesting not doing it at the major league. I'm saying a universal test for everybody that's an athlete. From major league on down. Everybody. Absolutely, yes. You would, you would be in favor? Yes. Do you, how, do you have any idea how pervasive steroids are used, particularly in our younger population in college and high school? Do you, do you have any feeling as a result of being the center of this controversy? Yeah. Um, if it's any proportion to at the major league level at the peak of steroid use, I would say very high. Do you have any percentages or fractions that you No, see? I don't. Okay. Not, not beyond the major league level, no, I don't. It's very high. Well, uh, c carrying that on, now, I'm going to give you an analogy that has bothered me. And I, I don't expect that any of you have the answer. But supposedly somebody came out with smart pills. And that smart pill could make you 10 times smarter than you are right now. And they may put a warning on there. It could cost you five or 10 years of your life expectancy. How, how many people would be tempted to try and win a Nobel Prize and take that smart pill? You know, that's a very tough question because we don't know if we're going to be around tomorrow or not. We don't know if our futures are guaranteed or not. But the smart pill guarantees something, meaning you're going to, you're going to win a Nobel Prize. It's a tough question to ask. I, I really don't well, even... It, it, it's trying to get to the point, look, there's a motivation of why athletes who have a, a high appreciation of their body they're making a judgment of risking something. So what I'm saying is it's some, somewhat of an intelligent question that they raise. I mean, I, I assume all of you fellows would have had, particularly you, I won't address it to the other. You had an idea it could be dangerous to your body, didn't you? Gentlemen's time is, has expired. If you'd like to answer, you may. Um, I think as athletes have become more educated, yes, they're starting to realize that or more and more information that the dangers are greater and greater. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Gutnick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, this has been uh, one of the most fascinating hearings I have ever participated in. And I've been in Congress now 10 years. Um, I'm like a lot of the folks uh, up here on this side of the, the panel. Um, 
I grew up listening to baseball games uh, on uh, WHO radio, listening to the Minnesota Twins, and my idols were people like Harmon Killebrew and Earl Batty and Richie Rollins, and I, I remember those games like it was yesterday. And when I started thinking about this issue, and as this issue has sort of, you know, bubbled up over the last several years, my first reaction is how unfair this is to people uh, like Harmon Killebrew. And you wonder how many home runs he might have hit if he'd have been able to use chemicals, uh, or uh, particularly uh, Hank Aaron. You know, and, and in some respects, it, it sort of cheats the game, and it cheats history, and it cheats things like that. And I think about baseball especially because growing up watching Roger Maris uh, hit 61 home runs and remembering that for years, and perhaps even today, there's an asterisk as after his name. And knowing that, for example, in little leagues now, and even in softball leagues, we use aluminum bats. But we don't do that in, in baseball, not in the major leagues and not even in the minor leagues. And the reason is we take those records so seriously. I mean, they're almost a part of history. We all know uh, where we were when uh, Roger Maris hit that 61st home run, and we remember some of those things. And so in many respects, when, when I thought about this hearing first, I thought about some of the greats of the game. One of my favorite expressions is, uh, with all, all kinds of issues we deal with here in Washington, is that it shouldn't take an act of Congress. But I'd like to all of you perhaps respond to that question. Can baseball heal itself, or is it going to take an act of Congress to, to force them to come to grips with, with this problem and ho hopefully begin to spread the message down to the, uh, to the minor leagues and to the colleges and high schools and ultimately to the little leagues that this is a bad idea and, and it's the wrong way to go and it cheats you, it cheats the game, and it cheats the history of baseball? Is it going to take an act of Congress, Ms. Schilling? I don't think so. I, 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 as a member of the Players Union, as a former player representative, I believe, and I've always believed, that the, that the 90 plus percentile of players that test clean want to make sure that the ones that don't are found out. And I think that given what I've heard from, from the commissioner and from, from the people and uh, player representatives, that's going to happen now. And I think the fear of public embarrassment and humiliation upon being caught is going to be greater than, than any player ever imagined. I don't believe it's going to take an act of Congress. I believe that our game will get straightened out, and I believe that it will get cleaned up. We just need to give this policy a chance. And like I said before, if we need to enhance it, let's do it. You know, I, I don't know, being that I'm retired, but whatever it's going to take to put more of a positive light on this situation, to detract the young people of today away from this stuff, I'm all for it. I believe it can heal itself. If a Major League Baseball takes that seriously, we can do so. I've got to be honest again, I don't believe it can unless Congress steps in because of the frugal testing programs that Major League Baseball has, <laughs> it'll just be a joke. It'll be all this all over again. No if and buts about it. And talking about uh, baseball, the way it's changed, baseball is evolving. Uh, uh, the ballparks, the, the uh, bats, the, let's say there was no steroids invented today at all, the nutrition, the information on, on, on food supplements out there are incredible. Nonetheless, let's say 10, 15, 20 years from now, we have a shortage of wood in the world. Now we have to go to aluminum bats. So we're constantly evolving, moving forward, striving to become bigger, faster, stronger. We just have to find a way of doing it legally. That's it. I yield back. Thank you very much. Mr. Sanders. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I want to thank you and uh, the ranking member for calling this important hearing. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, this morning uh, I was on a TV show, as I'm sure many members of this committee were, and I was asked by the interviewer whether I thought this committee was grandstanding, uh, whether in fact we were using the fame of these outstanding athletes to get our names in the paper and so forth. And I said I didn't think so because I thought this was a hugely important issue impacting millions of young people. And that's what I believe. But I do want to say that I am overwhelmed by the kind of media attention that this has gotten. I have counted dozens of TV cameras. And I think some of the American people wonder, is this all we do? Because this is what they see on television. So I want to say to our media friends, 
that when some of us talk about the collapse of our health care system and millions of people not having any health insurance, come and join us. And we talk about the United States having the highest rate of childhood poverty in the industrialized world at a time when the rich are going richer. Come on down. Now, maybe we may have to bring great baseball players to help us talk about childhood poverty. I don't know. I would hope not. I'd hope we could have some of the great experts, and I would hope you would come. But to the American people, some of us are dealing with other issues as well. In terms of, of this issue, I have a, a couple of questions uh, that I would like to ask our, uh, our guests. I have heard a discrepancy of opinion about the seriousness of the problem. Mr. Conseco says it's rampant. Everybody knows it. Virtually lots of people are doing it. Mr. Schilling says he's not so sure. He doesn't really think it is a terribly serious problem. And I think Mr. Palmero has agreed with Mr. Schilling. So let me start off. And I know this is a hard one. Are we talking about 1 percent of players, to your judgment, doing it? Are we talking about 5 percent, 10 percent? Is Mr. Conseco the only player in the world to have done this? Mr. Schilling? No, I don't think he is the only player. I think he's, I think he's a liar. I think that what he did was grossly overstate a situation to make himself not look as bad. How many, what would you be your guess in terms I, of percentage? You know what? Right? I, I, I took an oath. I swore to tell the truth here today. In 19 years in the big leagues, I have never seen a syringe other than one prescribed by a doctor to a player. I have never seen steroids. But in locker room gossip, you may not have seen it. People right. talk, right? This guy's doing something. That guy's doing something. I don't need names. What's your guess? Uh, You've heard people saying that we, somebody I, is doing absolutely. it. Absolutely. There's discussion about other guys on other teams. Um, I would say the percentage is, is on or around where it's been tested at. I don't think it's much higher. I think it's, I think it's grow again, I, I'm in a locker. I've been with six different teams. I play with over thousands of players. I, I, I w I've guessed that maybe five to ten of my teammates in the last 15 years were using. I, I'm five my, in the last 15 years? Maybe. Five to ten at most. I, I wouldn't know any more. Okay. Right, Mr. Pomero, Mr. Schilling says he, he would guess maybe five or ten players in the many years he's been in the majors. What do you guess? I wouldn't know. Uh, I couldn't take a guess. Uh, I just think as long as even one percent is too high, that's way too high. We need to make sure it's zero percent. Mr. McGuire, would you like to speculate? I wouldn't know, but there's a, there's a big reason why we're here today to talk about it. Okay. Mr. Sosa, what's your guess? I won't know. I, I really... Mr. Conseco? I guess I'd say Mr. Schilling is correct about today's statistics on how many people are using steroids because um, we've made steroids aware. We've brought it out. Uh, this book came out, scared a lot of individuals. If they were using steroids when this book came out, they cold stopped. So you're suggesting that it went from wide prevalence down to what Mr. Schilling is saying, almost nothing? Is that what you're saying? Well, when I mentioned the 80%, I mentioned at the peak of steroid use. That may have been somewhere from 94 on to the year 2000. That's when I played. Okay. I've been retired for, I guess, three or four years now. It's been a, it's been a long time. But um, because of certain instances that have, that have happened, definitely, it's definitely curtailed greatly. Yes. Okay. Let, let me ask. Uh, the last question. I, I appreciate all of your efforts and, and you're willing to stand up for the kids of America that you know your role models, you know that steroids are bad, and you want to do everything you can to prevent kids from emulating bad habits. My question is this. If the major leagues does not come forth with an aggressive policy, and I think what you're hearing today is we are not overly impressed by what the major leagues have done, will you come back in a year from now and say, members of Congress, we support you in passing federal legislation to tell the major leagues that they have got to be aggressive and pass strong and stringent requirements. In other words, will you come back and tell us to do that? Mr. Schilling? Yeah, I, I'm not sure I can answer that. I mean, I, we are in support of, of, of a stronger system that eradicates the use of steroids by but players. If the majors don't do anything, if the league doesn't do anything, are you going to come back if we ask you to come back? That's a hypothetical I don't believe is going to happen. Uh, you sound like a politician there, won't you? <laughs> Mr. Palmero? Hey, Bernie, Bernie, I, I'm in agreement a Republican. With, uh, you better not encourage know, him. Right, right. I'm in agreement with Kurt. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, but, you know, if, if You it, think the league is going to do the right thing? I believe so, but if it doesn't, I'm, I would be more than happy to come back and let's address the problem Mr. again. McGuire, will you come back and join us? Well, I have no idea. I'm being a retired player. I have no idea what the policy is, but if you'd like me back, sure. Okay. Mr. Sosa? Yes, I believe that, uh, you know, uh, Major League Baseball is going to do something. No question. If you had to come back here, 
I'm happy to do it. Thank you. Mr. Conseco. I think it'd be a major mistake to let the league police itself. No if and buts about it. We'll be back here qu quicker than quick. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You, uh, Mr. Dent. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It, I promise Mr. Issa first, and then we'll go to Mr. Dent. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very Mr. much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Schilling, uh, I, must, I must say I, I came here intending on, on throwing softballs uh, to all of you whenever possible, but listening, I've been a little disappointed that I'm sort of hearing a consistent pattern from you as a, as a player's rep that there isn't a problem and we don't need to intervene. So would it surprise you if I told you that I talked to multiple professional team owners, including baseball, and had an absolute positive please legislate a zero tolerance. Would it surprise me? Would it surprise no. you? No. So, so that's a position that you feel comfortable comes from the, the owners. Position being? That a zero tolerance, go ahead and mandate it. That, that doesn't surprise you that the owners feel that way. Uh, I, I, um, not that they say it, no. Okay. Well, I, you know, I take people. Yeah, Mr. Schilling, I take people. He is a pretty good politician, politician, isn't he? I yes, he is. <laughs> oh, and by the way, as to my colleague on the other side talking about that pill to make us ten times smarter, I think it could be mandated for Congress to save the nation. So uh, uh, I'm not sure that that wouldn't be one we would, we would give ourselves a special exemption as we do so many other things. Uh, the earlier panel, I asked every member, and they were medical and grieving parents, uh, basically a question. And I'll set it up. If you use a, uh, the aluminum bat, if you were to sneak one into a game and use it, that'd be cheating, wouldn't it? And if you were to, uh, if you were a pitcher, you were to bring in a dull ball so that nobody could really hit a home run off of you while you were pitching, that'd be cheating, wouldn't it? Anyone disagree here? So using an illegal drug to attempt to enhance the performance of a player would be cheating, wouldn't it? Anyone here disagree in any way, shape, or form? And wouldn't you agree that Congress has a vested interest in ensuring that baseball does not have cheating going on? Mr. Chairman, I've got all my questions answered. I yield uh, back. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Kucinich. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Some have used steroids, and with respect to baseball, it defies credibility that only the players knew. I mean, we're holding players accountable here, but what about those who profited from a system of enhanced performance? Others knew including the owners, which may explain why the owners may be congenial to uh, some changes. So good for them. What has not been investigated today or documented is the win-at-all-costs mentality which has infected not only sport, but business, the media, and I might add, politics. Our steroids are called uh, PACs and special interest contributions. This does not excuse anyone, but if we leave here today without looking at the larger questions of pressures to succeed, pressures to win, pressures to make money, pressures to be bigger, pressures to be better, win at all costs, at the cost of health, at the cost of reputation, at the cost of life. If we don't look at these larger questions of win at all costs, if we don't think about this, if we don't go deeper with our thinking here today, we'll be back here years from now, regardless of what these players so graciously commit to do. We only need to go back to Mr. Waxman's initial testimony, his statement about how we've been here before. Now, I'd like to have the remaining time belong to the players who have said that they want to communicate with the young people of America Take the opportunity now, because I think this is an important moment to do it. What can you say right now, Mr. Schilling, to America's youth uh, with respect to the use of steroids? Just in a half a minute to a minute. I think that uh, we... If you speak directly to the young people. I, I think to the, to the youth of America, we've, we've 
uh, made it very clear that steroids is cheating and, and winning without honor is not winning. Mr. Primero. I would have to say that I am the perfect example of someone that came from another country and took advantage of the situation that was given to me. I've worked very hard and I've dedicated my life to my sport. Mr. Uh, McGuire. I would say that steroids are wrong. Do not take them. Gives you nothing but false hope. Uh, that's, just, that's, that's what I would say. Uh, Mr. Sosa, ¿podría usted dar un consejo a los jóvenes de nuestro país con respecto al uso uh, de uh, esteroides? Yes, sir. Sí. Um, I would say pretty much, you know, hard work, believe in yourself, you know, uh, a drug that they are not good, good, and, and, and work hard, you know. It's set it myself as a sample, you know, coming from the island, work hard, make it to the major league. So that's the only thing that I can say everybody up there and, you know, believe in yourself. Mr. Canseco, thank you. Mr. Canseco. I can speak for myself and say I made a mistake using steroids, no from buts about it. I don't want any youngsters using steroids. Um, speak to the young people. Yes, I, I probably haven't slept in three or four days. My attorney can verify this because of this issue. Uh, first hearing. Uh, about these children that took their lives, it, it's not worth it. And, and I'm, and I'm going to say this again. If Congress does nothing about this, Major League Baseball will not regulate themselves. The Player Association will not regulate these players. That I guarantee. I've been a Major League player for 17 years. Sure, the Player Association and the owners disagree on most things. But when it comes to making money, they're on the same page. Well, uh, and that's what I alluded to earlier, and I would, I would uh, suggest to the members of the committee that we can take these players at their word about their commitment, wherever they've been in the past. As a matter of fact, some who know the territory well may be the best spokespersons about a new direction. And even if you've not been in that territory, as some of our witnesses have said, you can also uh, make a strong statement. People, young people look up to you. And so thank you for being here today. And I agree that we need to look forward. And, and we need to move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dent. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, uh, you know, we're here for a variety of reasons today because, one, this committee has oversight on federal drug policy. We're all concerned about our youth. I believe we all can say that. And the other, the other constituency I think that has to be considered today are the taxpayers of this country. And in my state, where we subsidize Major League Baseball, taxpayers do, 100, over $150 million went to support stadiums in the cities of Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. We subsidize that industry, which is treated like a monopoly because of the antitrust exemption your industry enjoys. That said, here's my, my main question. I, in 1919, Major League Baseball went through the Black Sox scandal and the, and the gambling issues that uh, really, I guess, created the commissioner's office in order to deal with that problem. And I believe that in 2005, we're about where, that's about where baseball is now. 1919-2005 uh, is another seminal year for baseball. And I guess my question is, is, is really this. Do you believe that steroid use in baseball is as serious an issue for Major League Baseball as is uh, the anti-gambling policy that Major League Baseball uh, currently has imposed? Uh, Mr. Schilling, you want to start? I think it's cheating. I think any form of cheating is, I don't okay. think they're any more serious than the next. I, I, believe, I agree. As long as there's positive tests, it's, it's wrong and we need to clean it up. It, I don't know, but if it's, if it's a, positive, a positive move, I'm all for it. Yeah, I guess my... I do the same thing. Okay. I didn't quite hear the question. The question was, is this issue, steroid abuse by ball players, as serious an issue as gambling or potential gambling by players? A steroid issue is much more serious because it, it takes lives. So you have to be so very get, careful with it. I get it. the sense that you either think it's as serious or more serious in your case. Because in... I guess it was several years ago, Pete Rose was banned for life, for the game, for, banned for life from the game of baseball uh, because of a violation of gambling policy. And I guess this is the second question. Why do you think Major League Baseball was so aggressive then in going after Mr. Rose on that issue and seems to have been uh, so much less aggressive on this steroid issue? Do you think it's because of money? Or, but what drives that? I'll start with you, Mr. Conseco. I, I think it's very simple when you really look at it. Um, it didn't affect the game in the sense of this issue, steroids, actually affects your game. It's, it's a completely different subject matter. Mm. Mr. Sosa. 
I had no idea. I can't answer that. Could you repeat the question? Why, why do you think baseball was so much more aggressive about Pete Rose's gambling issue than it has been about uh, this whole issue of steroid use, which has been described by some as, as rampant? I'm not sure. My guess would be that, uh, you know, it, it is illegal to gamble. It's illegal to bet on baseball. It's always been that way. Um, that's about all that I can say about that. Okay. Nope. No answer? Okay. I, I, I'm just curious what your perspective would be because, it, I mean, it was always clear to me. I, I thought that, you know, baseball players knew not to bet in, in games, particularly ones they're playing in, and, uh, and there were serious sanctions uh, for that kind of behavior. It just, do you, it just, I just get the sense from hearing what I've heard that Major League Baseball just doesn't take this issue nearly as seriously as it does the gambling issue. And, uh, and I, I commend Major League Baseball for what they did when they, they found an instance of gambling. I mean, they dealt with it decisively as they should have. And I'm just trying to get a sense from players or former players why you think they're less aggressive on this. And if anybody has anything to say, I'd be glad to hear it. You might, you might ask the next panel. I think they may have yeah, something. I'm going to ask them that one, too. Don't worry. But I thought I'd get a player's <laughs> perspective on this one. But uh, okay. I understand your reluctance to want to answer that question. Uh, thank you very much. Mr. Davis. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, Representatives of the League have emphasized that the current policy, that is the current testing policy, is a negotiated labor agreement, you know, that, that was negotiated. It's a collective bargaining agreement. And, and I have a great deal of respect for that. But I guess the question becomes for me that since the impact the outcome, the results of what we're dealing with is far more reaching than just the players themselves in terms of their work situation and the owners themselves in terms of the work environment. How do we get the two, Mr. Con Conseco, you've emphasized consistently that you just don't believe that there is enough will within the industry itself, that is enough will among the, the, the owners and players to put together a serious policy that will, will impact the situation to a level of satisfaction. Is there any possibility that, that, that the industry can, in fact, really police itself that, that would make it unnecessary for federal legislation to further regulate baseball and, and drug use, if you will, among um, players of the game? And, and so maybe we could just revisit that. Is there, Mr. Schillen, any, any real possibility of that happening? Absolutely. I think it's already happened. I think that uh, what you've seen in the last couple of months is a direct result of Senator McCain's uh, anger over the uh, original policy. And I uh, understand that after yesterday he's uh, a little bit more perturbed than he might have been two days ago. But... Um, my understanding is, and, and after, after having spoken to him, that we are taking steps. It, and, and I believe if you, as a body, are voicing your displeasure, which you have done, baseball will listen. I know that as a player, I know we've listened. We understand that there needs to be more stringent testing. There needs to be more stringent things done. There are loopholes. I don't question for a second. We'll close them to make sure, because as a player, we want the playing field to be level. Mr. Canseco, could you... Why are you so adamant that, uh, that nothing will really happen unless Congress steps in? I, I try to think about this in a positive way. And, but if you really look at it and you look at the uh, drug testing policies today, nothing has really been done. I, I think we're looking at drug testing policies not even down on paper yet. So, I mean, I'm hoping just out of this, something happens. At least the public is aware, at least 
you know, children, children's parents are aware of what's really going on, and maybe they can help also. So then all of you are actually disagreeing with those who have suggested that there is no role in this activity for Congress to play, and that this committee and the Congress is overstepping its bounds. I don't think, I don't think any of us said that. No, I didn't say that any of no. you said it, but there are people who are suggesting it, and I'm trying to get a verification from you that you're in agreement with my side of it. I think that's just the Which media. Which is that we're doing exactly what we ought to be doing. The media and Democrats, maybe, but no. We're, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we owe you guys one after Ms. Watson's thing. That was Absolutely. <laughs> could, could we finish? Yeah. I believe that we are policing ourselves right now, and I believe that we will clean the game because I believe that players, like Kurt said, want a level playing field. Mr. McGuire. Whatever it takes. Mr. Sosa. Yeah, I believe they take it seriously. Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Gentleman has I a little no time left. Questions. Would he yield to me? Yes, I yield to Mr. Weissman. Why should we believe that the Baseball Commission and the Baseball Union will want to do something when we have a 30-year record of them not responding to this problem. Why should we believe it's all going to be done now the way it should be done? Mr. Schilling, could you answer that question? 30 years they've done nothing, and even the proposal that you're vouching for is not in, in effect yet. It's only a draft, and it's filled with loopholes. And what you seem to be telling us is what baseball seems to be telling us. Trust us. Don't you think there's a reason not to trust them? What, what do you mean by 30 years of history? Well, 30 years ago, there was a committee hearing in Congress that looked at this whole problem, and Bowie Kuhn was the commissioner, and he assured the congressman that they were going to do testing and they were going to stop steroids. That was 30 years ago. There have been so many other incidents of reports in the last 10, 15 years of widespread steroid use. Nothing has happened from the baseball industry. And even now, when they've put a testing program in place, it seems to be full of holes. Don't you think at some point even a Republican would say, <laughs> as a Democrat would say, how long do we go along with this trust that something's going to be done when we don't see a very good record? I can't answer for the, the, the prior 30 years. I can answer for my time in the game as a player. Um, I think there's a, a, a huge contingent. Like I said, there's 98.3 percent of us that have tested clean, that are all for as stringent a testing as we can get that's constitutional and fair. And you, you if, accept the test. Absolutely. The okay, thank you. I, my gentleman's time has expired. Mr. Westmoreland. No uh, questions. Uh, let me move to Mrs. Ross uh, Leighton. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. And I'm uh, uh, very honored to, uh, to be here uh, today. This is a, a very important issue, not, not just for the uh, for the nation, it's, uh, uh, but uh, as all of the players have pointed out, what an important message it sends to, to the young people. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that uh, everyone is saying uh, the right thing. And I just wanted to point out the testimony given by um, two of my, my favorite a athletes, Rafael Palmero and, and Sammy Sosa, and their, their hometown uh, favorites in, uh, in, in our community in South Florida. As Rafael said, my parents and I came to the United States after fleeing communist tyranny that still reigns over my homeland of Cuba. We came seeking freedom, knowing that through hard work, discipline, dedication, my family and I could build a bright future in America. And as a matter of fact, when uh, he was asked by the team owner uh, to go to Cuba and play baseball diplomacy uh, and, and, uh, and do that with Castro, he said, not me. And uh, we, we admire him for, for his courage because we know that that, that was not a, an easy decision. And I, I thank uh, Chairman Davis for uh, uh, being open to uh, the possibility of having uh, Rafael belong to the, uh, be a member of the task force that uh, 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 they'll be putting together. He'll be a, a valuable addition, a person who says that uh, his goal is to stamp out steroids uh, out of the sport. And uh, it, he uh, would certainly uh, 
add a lot to the debate. As all of us know, there are a high number of Hispanics uh, playing uh, baseball uh, throughout the nation uh, in, at, at all levels, and he would certainly be a, a leading role model for that. And, and Sammy Sosa, what an outstanding uh, athlete uh, growing up uh, dirt poor in, in the Dominican uh, Republic, uh, undergoing um, very difficult circumstances to, to get where he is today. And, he says very strongly supports testing professional athletes for illegal performance enhancing drugs and we congratulate you Sammy for uh, for that stand and both of these uh, individuals do so much charity work especially in our area of South Florida and and uh, we congratulate them for that felicidades muchas gracias and uh, Jose Canseco is uh, a Miami boy growing up just uh, a few blocks from where I grew up a graduate of uh, Coral Park uh, High School and I'm, I'm pleased to have uh, Jose say that he's devastated when he listens to the testimony uh, that uh, we heard today, and I know that he's heard it in the past, of parents of young people who have, uh, the young people have killed themselves as a, as a, a result of uh, steroid use. And, and I hope that as a proud uh, graduate of, uh, of Coral Park, the Rams, that uh, in a street that's named for him right there, Southwest 16th Street, that you go back to Coral Park and you go back to my alma mater, Southwest, just a few blocks away, and uh, talk to the young people about uh, the dangers of steroid use, and, uh, and your voice uh, will be heard. And, uh, and I encourage uh, all of you to continue that battle, and, and I especially congratulate uh, Rafael and Sammy. Muchas gracias, mi amigos. Muchas gracias a usted. And I'd like to yield my remaining time to Mr. Sauter. Okay. I'd Mr. just Sauter. like to add for the, the uh, uh, record, as, as Major League Baseball and Congress work together in, in how you look at, at drug testing, in 1989, I was a staffer for then Senator Dan Coats, and we passed the first drug testing legislation through uh, the Safe and Drug Free Schools Act. And we looked at a high school in Indiana, McCutcheon High School, where they drug tested their kids because of several injuries on their baseball team. And one third had tested positive for marijuana. That led to it being sustained by the courts that in any athletic or athletic type event in any school in the country, they could uh, drug test. It still is to what other kinds of random tests, but the courts have also ruled for students that when there is possible cause or something that a student does, then you can test and not have it be legally uh, challenged. For example, uh, if you're tardy three days to school, you can be tested because that may be a sign of, that you've been partying. In baseball, I would suggest there are other things, such as sudden dramatic changes in player performance. Hey, if you're clean, it doesn't matter. Like Rafael Palmero said, if you're clean, hey, a drug test shouldn't be a problem. Also, dramatic improvement when you're aging, like uh, Senator Bunning referred to. After a strike, when there's a financial incentive to alter the game, that would be a good time to have more drug testing than usual. Also, if a particular franchise is in financial trouble, those are motivations that cause question to the game, and drug testing should be accelerated. Also, including a FEDRA and other things in it. So there are lots of loopholes of policy, and I hope the players are very serious that you'll talk to your player reps about doing logical testing like we do for truck drivers, like we do in schools, not just in the Olympics, but across this nation. I thank the gentlelady for yielding. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. McGuire, uh, I, along with uh, all of St. Louis and the country, uh, watch with great excitement when you and Mr. Sosa chased and broke Maris's home run records. Uh, a stretch of Interstate 70 that runs through the heart of my district is named after you. In St. Louis, Cardinal baseball has held a special place in the hearts of millions of fans for over 100 years. So naturally, I'm, I'm very concerned about allegations of player misconduct that, if substan substantiated, could damage that proud tradition. Mr. M Mr. McGuire, we are both uh, fathers of young children. Both my son and daughter uh, love sports, and they look up to stars like you. Can we look at those, those children with a straight face and tell them that great players like you played the game with honesty and integrity. Like I've said earlier, I'm not going to go into the past and talk about my past. I'm here to make a positive influence on this. Mr. McGuire, you have already acknowledged that you used certain supplements, including Andro, as part of your training routine. In addition to Andro, which was legal at the time that you used it, 
What other supplements did you use? I am not here to talk about the past. Mr. Kant, let me finish with my time. Mr. Uh, how did how did steroids enhance your effort to stab to uh, uh, hit hit the home run or your ability to uh, to hit hit the ball? Uh, for me, I think it was a little different because I've also had a back run of uh, since I was a child um, coming home from, from baseball practice, the same bending over and falling to the ground, paralyzed. I've had. I'm diagnosed with uh, degenerative disc disease, scoliosis, arthritis. I've had four major back surgeries, elbow surgery. So for me, for me, uh, I, I was a separate, different case than anyone else. In the sense of, I truly believe, yes, it helped me. Yes, it helped my uh, physical stature uh, and, and my muscle density helped me stand up straight. But I had so many other physical problems that um, that's why I said if you're completely healthy, I, I would never, ever touch this stuff, never. Would you have been able to perform at that level uh, uh, that, that you did achieve without those, uh, uh, without steroids? I'm, I, I'm an exception to the rule because I had all these ailments. And I, I truly believe that for myself, and I'm just you know, one in a, in a billion in this sense, um, it helped me because of my physicality. Thank I had problems you for with your it. honesty. Mr. McGuire, let me go back to you and ask you, would you have been able to have performed at that level without using Andros? I'm not going to talk about the past. Okay, let me go on to Mr. Schilling then. Um, I commend you for speaking out against steroids even before baseball implemented testing. Who benefits from having a weak drug testing policy? Nobody. Nobody benefits. Do clean athletes speak out often? I, I'm not sure I can answer that with any accuracy. And how do your your uh, colleagues receive your your message when you do speak out? Do they look at you funny? Do they? I, I don't think I speak for for. I, I'm not. I'm not trying to speak for everybody, but I think I speak for a majority of the players uh, when I say that uh, we all feel that it. You know, stricter testing is not something we're against. Okay, thank you for, for that response. Ms., uh, just uh, in closing, Ms. McGuire, I'm, I wish you had taken this opportunity to actually uh, answer some of these questions about your career and about the records that you yes. established. Thank you, gentlemen. This time has thank expired. You, Mr. Shays. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, gentlemen, it's uh, nice to have you here. This is an important hearing. It's about drugs. Uh, and frankly, uh, modestly interested until uh, we saw the response of Major League Baseball, which I think has been outrageous. Uh, some of your testimony has been very helpful. I want you to know that this committee had requested uh, a Major League Baseball joint drug prevention and treatment program. We wanted it, a copy of it. We asked for it. We wrote a letter. And then we had to subpoena it. Now, I would like to ask the three who are uh, active baseball players, I would like to have you tell me what you think or thought until today the policy was. And let me first say, we thought that it was uh, it, the first positive test, 10-day suspension, second positive test, 30-day suspension, third positive test, 60-day suspension, fourth positive test, one-year suspension, and then any subsequent positive test, you're out for life. That's what we thought it was. I want to ask the three active players, starting with you, Mr. Soso, uh, Sosa, if you thought that uh, this, that was the policy, or did you think it was what we now have learned, that you could also be fined up to 10000 on the first offense, fined up to 25000 on the second offense, fined up to 50000 on the third offense, fined up to 100000 on the fourth offense. Were you aware that you could be uh, given a fine instead of um, suspension? No. I wasn't aware of it. I knew about the 10-day uh, suspension for the first offense and your name being public and so on, but I wasn't aware of this, uh, the fine. You need to answer so they can record it. No, I wasn't aware of it. What does that tell you about Major League Baseball uh, and the management? 
If we couldn't get this information voluntarily, we couldn't get it through a request by letter after asking for it, and we had to subpoena this. Why would this document and why should this document have been prevented from coming to us? Uh, would anyone care to ask, answer that question? That's right. I can't help it. Okay. Let me ask you another question. I, I hear the concept of team player, and, and trust me, I don't care at this hearing, I don't care to get into the issue of cheating or records. I don't care at this hearing to know if you took drugs or not. I don't care to have you name names. But what piqued my interest was the concept that as a team player, I'm not going to name names. I'd like to know the obligation that each of you think you have for your team to make sure you don't have drugs uh, being used by teammates. And um, let me start with you, Mr. Schelling. Well, my obligation first is to the Lord, then to my family, my family name, above any of my teammates that I've ever had. Okay. Well, what do you think the Lord would want you to do? To, to be as truthful and honest as you could be and had to be. Would you, uh, does, do you feel that means that you should confront your, even in privately, your colleagues that are using them? I, I think that varies with different people. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how I would handle that. I've never had that problem. Um, you know, if it, if it became a problem, I guess I would confront the player. I agree. I, I've never had that problem in, in being retired and out of the game. Um, I couldn't You've even think about that. never had a problem of seeing uh, your colleagues use drugs? Is it, Pardon me? Never had a problem of seeing your colleagues use drugs, steroids, and so on. Is that what you mean? I don't know what you mean by you never had that problem. Let me just go to Mr. Conseco. I'm not going to get into the past. He's not getting into that. Okay, I, I'm not really asking about the past. Um, Mr. Sosa, what obligation do you think you have to uh, your team if you are aware that someone is using drugs on your team? I'm a private person. I don't really go, you know, ask people whatever it is. Okay. Well, I'll just conclude by saying I think I know your answer, sir. Uh, it just seems to me that one of the messages you may be telling young people is that a team player, it's an interesting concept of a team player, it seems to me. It seems Thank to me you do have an obligation. Gentleman's time's expired. Ms. Watson. I want to thank everyone in front of us for being here in this most grueling session. Believe me, some of us feel very deeply for you. My concern is this. When I read statistics like this, more than 500 high school students have tried steroids, nearly triple the number just 10 years ago, nearly 20 percent of eighth graders, nearly 30 percent of 10th graders, and more than 40 percent of 12th graders that were surveyed, surveyed in 2004 they were using steroids and found them fairly easy and very easy to obtain. So I want to ask a question about where does that come from? And I think it seems to be that drug use goes across all sports. And it's the sign of the times. It seems to be so acceptable today to take some kind of drug. I don't care what kind of sport you're using. And I guess we have to know that our youth are living in a different era when they do this as a matter of standard. So what I want to ask is what happened to sportsmanship? I'm using that in the generic, sportsmanship. And why are drugs so accessible? And is it the money that drives this kind of practice. Does anyone want to talk about that? I am highly concerned about our youth today. And believe me, I know of what I'm talking about. I used to sit on a school board in Los Angeles. I was a school counselor. I chaired the health committee for 17 years. We fought along with Representative uh, Waxman 
tobacco use, and that's why I held this up too. I had a dual purpose. This is a man who used steroids and smoked cigars and was on the front of Sports Illustrated. I am really disturbed by the messages we're sending to young people today. And so uh, that's a general, those are general questions. If you'd like to expound on them, fine. If you don't, it's all right with me. But I just had to get it out. Anybody want to say anything? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Th Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Lynch. I'll yield. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Canseco, I just want to start off by saying the testimony I'm hearing today from you at this hearing is much, much different than what I, I have read in your book. I have to say it's a stock, stock change. Uh, I, I just want to remind you uh, at the end of your book, you stated, what I'm hoping is that some more intelligent, forward-looking voices will come out and urge baseball to embrace the potential of steroids and to fight for their place in the game and in our lives. That's what you're selling here in this book. I don't know if there's a new book coming out with what you're saying today, <laughs> but, but I got to tell you, I'm a little surprised what I read and, you know, uh, and, and what you're saying. So can you, can you enlighten me a little bit because I'm a little bit surprised. I think we have to put it in context. This book took, I think, over two years to write. And while maybe that may have been my opinion two years ago, it's not today, absolutely not. I have, I have you know, spoken with people, uh, seen certain things that steroids has done, and um, it's, I'm okay. completely done a, you know, a turnaround we'll when it comes to We'll wait for the that. sequel. Uh, Mr. Schilling. I actually live in my district. I want to say, uh, in fairness to you, there's never been any, any allegation or any suspicion that you've ever had anything to do with any of this stuff. You, you're here uh, for two reasons. That's what they tell me. One, you've been outspoken on this stuff and, and, and a voice for, for, for right in this case, and that you're well respected among all the parties, the, the, the owners, the managers, the players, everyone. I got to tell you, though, I'm a little bit surprised that you you still believe in self-regulation. And I'm looking, I'm a, I'm a former iron worker president, and I would negotiate for my guys and ladies, and then I would come back to them with the contract after I negotiated with the companies, and I would ask them to ratify it. And Mr. Davis touched on this a little earlier. Did you folks ratify this contract? Because it's not signed by the players' union. Right. It's not signed by management. It says it's a draft agreement. And I just wonder, did they ever come back to you and say, here's the drug policy, here's the collective bargaining agreement, like I would do with my members. Yeah. I would read it to them page by page and say, okay, now we're going to vote on this. Did they do that? Uh, I don't guys? think it's possible. I think the dynamics in which we negotiate are very different than when the ones that which you negotiate. We have over a thousand players spread around the world, yeah. uh, and the salaries are much different than the iron workers as well. I might add. Right. Uh, but we 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 elect player representatives to okay. to so, negotiate. So they ratify on us. behalf of. Did that happen though? Did they, uh, uh, yes, I, that always happens. It always happens, even with the drug policy. I, I can't speak to that specifically. You're going to have to ask the panel following us exactly how that happened. But I'm, as a player, I assume it did. Yes, absolutely. Okay. I just want to uh, just talk about where, where self-regulation has got us. You're allowed to leave in the middle of the urine test. There are a bunch of substances that are not included on the list. The players and the and the the league have to agree on what's going to be banned. It says on the text of the agreement, and that's what you, that's what you negotiate, the text of the agreement, that the first offense of steroid use, the players, according to the agreement, can pay $10,000 and keep it quiet. They're not publicized for their violation. They can buy it off for $10,000. And the average starting salary is over $2 million. So it's, it's not even a slap on the wrist. We have an escape clause here, where if the government comes in and starts investigating your drug policy, it goes away. You just get rid of it. The parties agreed. 
That's what self-regulation has got us. And I'm, I'm just, I, I, I don't, I'm not with you on that, I have to admit. I, I just don't think that baseball is capable, and I'm gonna, we're going to have a little chat with the next panel coming in. I just don't think that they have demonstrated good faith on their ability to be able to, yeah. to, be able to police this type of thing. Thank but you. I want to thank you all for coming here today. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Gentlemen's time's expired. Mr. Duncan, any questions? Very briefly, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, <clears throat> I heard Mr. Palmiero say that uh, he could live with a one-strike-you're-out Olympic uh, standard uh, on the steroids, and, uh, but then I had to go to other meetings, and Mr. Souter tells me that some of you defended the uh, present uh, major league policy. Uh, uh, after, after seeing all the interest, all the concern, after hearing all this testimony and seeing all these news reports about young people dying, and I, I saw a news report where a light heavyweight uh, uh, boxer who became a heavyweight boxer this weekend, they had a report on the national news that his legs were amputated, all these horrible things. It, w do any of you on the panel, would anybody object to the major leagues uh, coming in or instituting a much, much tougher, stricter policy, whatever that might be, much tougher than it is now? Any, do any of you have an objection to our, to our problems with something like that? Even if it's not quite as strict as what Mr. Palmiero said, or an uh, Olympic standard, but I mean a much, much tougher policy. Anybody have any problems with that? Objection to it, Mr. McGuire? Well, I, I, I'm retired, but I'm, I'm telling you, if, if whatever anybody can do to improve it, so there's no more meetings like this, I'm all for it. So <laughs> I, I think everybody seconds that here on the panel. All right. <laughs> all right. I think everybody agrees a much tougher standard is necessary. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Van Hollen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank all of you for your testimony here today, and thank all of you also for your commitment to use your star power uh, going forward to send a message to our young people about the dangers of steroid use and the fact that it's just simply the wrong thing to do uh, in baseball or any other uh, sport. Um, one of my sons, one of my young sons, um, Mr. Soso, wears, wore your T-shirt uh, to bed just about uh, every night, couldn't get it off of him, and that's when you were with the Cubs. I'm from Maryland. Now that you're with the uh, Baltimore Orioles, he's a real, real fan, an even extra fan. So all of you understand, I know, that uh, you have a great responsibility, uh, given the fact that you are heroes to so many young people, to, to convey the right messages, and I, I thank you for that. A part of making that message, I think, also requires conveying to people an understanding of the scope of the problem. And that's why we're here today, is to try to get a handle on the scope of the problem. And the best way we can all work together to approach eliminating uh, the problem. And in that regard, Mr. Schilling, I do have a, a question for you regarding your earlier statements regarding the extent of steroid use within baseball. Because as I understood your testimony, you said that steroid use in baseball is less than 2%. Uh, is that right? That's the, the results of the testing from the last season, yes. Right. And that, that's based on the, the league's current steroid right. testing policy, right? Right. But I think we've heard testimony today about the weakness in that policy. As I understand it, it does not include testing in the off-season. Is that right? I, I, yeah. It, it, it's random. Okay. All right. Is I, okay. It, it, does, it does not include, I understand, new designer steroids like a recent steroid uh, recently recognized by the World uh, Anti-Doping anti Agency. Uh, it did not include Andro, which is an anabolic steroid precursor that we understand that, that players used. Uh, and it did not include human growth hormone, which we also believe from at least news accounts uh, that players used. And so I guess, given that information, uh, are you confident that the 2 percent testing results really reflect the use of steroids? I don't believe as written in by by the author of that book that 78 percent of them slipped through the cracks if that's what you're asking me no no I, i'm really asking very simply you, you've used the number two percent right and that two percent i think is just important to understand for everybody is based on the current test right notes, right and i i think that a lot of the testimony today we heard from earlier panels suggests that that policy is a very weak policy and as i understand your testimony you would be willing to accept a much tighter policy right right so I, I think it's something we would all have to acknowledge that when you have a weak testing regime, 
you, you can't be confident in the results. Is that right? Right. I think, I think my answer earlier was given, again, on my 19 years of being in a major league clubhouse. I, I, I can honestly tell you I, I, I've never seen a syringe. I've, I, the discussion is nothing more than, than you get on high school lunch breaks. You talk, you wonder, you speculate, but none of us are, not many of us, if any, are experts. But I've never seen it. I've never seen a, 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 a I wouldn't know what it looked like. No, I, I appreciate that. I just, I just, the, the two percent number has been out there. I think it's important people understand that's based on a testing policy that I think most people have acknowledged today is, is relatively weak and would agree to, to strengthen it. Uh, and I think it's important that we understand the scope of the problem when we're trying to get a solution to it. And I think it's important when we're communicating to young people that we're not trying to narrow a scope of the problem, which at least by all press accounts uh, is much broader. So. I, I, I really think there has been some progress today. I think the fact that you're all committed to going forth after the testimony today to dedicate yourself to sending strong messages, I think that's a very important part of it. Obviously, tightening the testing policy is what gives some teeth to the, to the message going forward. But I, I thank you for your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Van Hollen. Ms. Sanchez. Thank you. Uh, let me just start by saying that I am a huge baseball fan, and I admire all of your talent and dedication to the sport. As a young girl who played competitive softball, I looked up to Major League Baseball players as my heroes. And as somebody who plays on the congressional baseball team, and that's baseball, uh, I still look up to you all and admire your talent. Uh, but because baseball is so intertwined in our, uh, you know, like our national heritage and our history, to me, you know, this hearing is about being upfront and honest about the problem. I think everybody here has agreed that there is a problem, but so far today, and I have to say I'm really disappointed because I'm hearing differences in terms of how widespread it is. We have one member of the panelists who says it's rampant, um, and we've got four-fifths of the panel that couldn't really speculate because, you know, they never saw it, they never heard it, they've never been around it, they don't know anything about it. And I just want to, um, you know, tell you that it's hard to reconcile those two visions about how rampant is this problem in baseball. And I think, you know, if we want to move forward, we have to start with being honest about how deep is this problem. I want to just read to you really briefly um, some news accounts. In 1995, the Los Angeles Times reported that uh, anabolic steroids apparently have become the performance drugs of the 90s in Major League Baseball. And uh, the paper quoted San Diego Padres general manager stating, we all know their steroid use, and it's definitely become more prevalent, I think 10 to 20 percent. That's in 1995. In July of 1997, the Denver, Denver Post quoted a player for the Colorado Rockies estimating that 20 percent of ball players use steroids. In 2000, the New York Times quoted Brad Andrus, the strength coach for the Colorado Rockies, as estimating that 30 percent of Major League Baseball players had used steroids at some point in their careers. And one veteran all-star outfielder said he believed that two-thirds of the top players in the National League are using some kind of steroid. In 2002, Sports Illustrated reported that the game has become a pharmacological trade show. And outfielder Chad Curtis estimated that 40 to 50 percent of the players use steroids. So it's hard for me to imagine that 2 percent of the players are using. We've had extensive questions on the testing. And my understanding is the current policy, the 2 percent testing is not testing that's done more than once a year randomly. It could be done in the off season, can be done in the preseason. But that's 2 percent that they're catching using at the time that the test is administered. Uh, we had a colleague that tried to pin you all down and have you just, I mean, estimate for us what percentage of ball players do you think are using. I mean, you guys are in the clubhouses. We're not. We don't have access there. We don't know. But we're getting this hear no evil, see no evil, don't know anything that's going on. I mean, the first step is admitting, hey, there's a problem. Next step, how widespread is it? And then the next step, what do we do to try to combat it? And I'm not hearing that from you all today. And I'm very disappointed, I have to say, extremely disappointed in the testimony today. So I'm going to ask, you know, we're not asking you to name names. We're not asking you to implicate anybody. We're asking you because everybody admits it's serious for young kids. But you know, you as a teammate, as a player, and if you're all non-users, which you four-fifths of the panel has testified, you guys didn't use. Um, if you guys are users, I would think 
that you would be the first to step up and say, hey, there's a problem with teammates that are using because it's potentially hazardous to their health and because it's unfair, it's cheating, it's not a level playing field. And if I'm not using, why should teammates be allowed to use? And yet I'm not hearing that. Have any of you ever confronted anybody over the use, asked them about it? You hear rumors in the locker room that was some of the testimony today, but you got none of you went to management or said, hey, there may be a problem here. Have any of you ever confronted a player or made that problem known? I mean, I'm hearing that 1% is too much, yet none of you throughout all the years that you collectively played together has ever stood up and said that before now, and I would just like an answer to that question as briefly as possible. My question, Starting I'm sorry, this, the question is? Have you ever made, I'm sorry, but I'm very passionate about this, mm -hmm. have you ever made the problem of use among players that you've heard rumored of, made that known to somebody responsible? No, no, I haven't. I never, and I never would, because I've never known for sure. I, I wouldn't know who to go to. I wouldn't know who's on it. Nobody knows. I'm not here to discuss that. You're not here to discuss a pass, and you're out of baseball now, Mr. Sosa. I really not going to tell you something that I don't know. Period. Mr. Canseco, when you played, did you ever notify anybody about the use by other players? Uh, in, in my days, which it states in my book. I was a source of information for it. But you never made it the yeah. problem aware to never, anybody no. responsible. It, it wasn't, it's, it's funny because it, yeah. it, it wasn't a problem. There yeah. wasn't anyone <laughs> that said, you know, don't do it, or you shouldn't do it, or if you get caught, this is going to happen to you. It was acceptable in the 80s and mid to late 90s as a cup of coffee. Thank you. Thank you. Gentle ladies, time's expired. We have uh, two uh, questioners left, and then we're going to dismiss the panel and move to the final panel. Mr. Rupersberger, any questions? Well, when you come to the end of the panel, a lot has been discussed, and uh, we've been here all day. Uh, the first thing, I think that in the beginning I was concerned about this hearing. Um, now I think it's a very positive. It's very positive for baseball. Uh, the issue is now on the table. I guarantee you, Jose Consenco is not going to win a popularity contest with the players, but he might be the best thing that's happened to you all. Baseball has a public relations problem. And in my opinion, you players can solve it. Now, we can talk about management, and management has a lot of responsibilities. But we've been going through this, this testimony about who knows what, would you talk to a player? You know, it all comes down, in the end, I think, to having a good drug policy that works. If the NFL can have a policy, if the Olympics can have a policy, especially the Olympics who had a credibility problem, then you can do it. We love your game. You know, I look at you, Kurt Schilling, it was one of the worst trades we ever had. I'm a Baltimore Oral fan. But, but, bottom line, you can fix it. And you've been dodging a little bit today, in my opinion, about saying, well, if I don't know about it, I'm not going to say about it. If I think my colleague's taking a bribe, I'm going to deal with it. And it's your responsibility, I think, with baseball. You have one of the best negotiators in fair. And if he can't negotiate uh, w with, um, with management, and, and management, really, I'm putting more burden on you than management because management would love to fix this. And let's get on with the game of baseball. So my question, bottom line, would you take the position to go to fear and organize your players who have a responsibility to this country for our national pastime, for our children? Would you, would you go to fear and say, we want the best and the strongest program that we can have to bring integrity to baseball? Because if you don't have integrity, eventually this game is going to have problems. And we don't want that to happen. Now, yes. Would you go to fear and do whatever and work with us? You might, know the, you might not know the intricacies of drug policy. I do. I was a former prosecutor who de dealt with drugs. You have to have accountability. You, you can't tell people when they're going to test somebody. You have to make sure that you follow the, the vial when you take the urine test. These are things that have to be done. But if each one of you would agree, and I challenge each one of you here today to organize your players. You're world champion now. You, you, you've got a momentum to challenge your players to say we will go and we will do what we can do. We will match the NFL. Do you think you're a better sport than the NFL? Than the NFL? <laughs> well, definitely. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah. Well, why, well, why, well, then why can't you have a drug policy like the NFL? Agreed. So bottom line, you can fix it. Okay, you can't blame the owners. The owners have responsibility. But you go to, to Selig, I'm sure he would love to have the strictest policy you could have, and then you can go on about playing baseball. How about you, Rafael? I agree. I agree. I would go to Donald Fear for that. Okay. If you were there, Mr. McGuire. Well, being that I'm retired. 
I know that. <laughs> I still would go to him, yes. Sammy Show, welcome to Baltimore, but would you do that? I would do the same thing. Okay, and what do you think, Jose? I gave you a, a plug. You know, you, you put you. this issue on the table. And, and, and by the way, if I was going to question you, I would have questioned you about credibility because you've made some inconsistent statements about how many people, well, I'll go over it later, in a private time, if I was going to question you. But the more I think about it, you, had the, you, you put it out there on the table and now we're dealing with it. And if players and baseball management don't do it now, shame on you. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. I lost my voice, by the way, but it wasn't for me asking Mr. questions. Serrano, you're a cleanup batter. Clean up better. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm just going to make two comments very briefly. One, a request, which probably falls more on the shoulders of Mr. Sosa and Mr. Palmero than anybody else. If we talk about an education program for young people, please remember that according to statistics, I think it's 40 percent of all professional ball players from rookie league up are Latin Americans. And so an educational program that doesn't include an outreach to the Dominican Republic, to Venezuela, to Mexico, and to other places in Latin America will not be in preparation for what needs to happen. There have been already scandals reported about in anticipation of signing as free agents, people in different parts of Latin America are being beefed up and hurt with drugs. And secondly, and, and, and I hope that would happen. And secondly, I hope that as the one of the last speakers today, you see us for who we are. I'm not a member of this committee. The chairman and the ranking member gave me the privilege of being here today because I, like so many of these people on this panel, are baseball fanatics. For me, baseball is not a game, it's a passion. We may be looked, and some reporters may see us, as politicians having another hearing, but we're concerned about a game we love. When Mr. McGuire and Mr. Sosa took us on that ride that summer. That wasn't just hitting home runs. That was a country hanging on to heroes. When Mr. Palmero, I will watch you this summer as you become the only, the fourth player, joining Aaron and Murray and Mays to get 500 home runs and 3,000 hits. As a Latino, I feel proud. And as an American, I'll be excited. Mr. Canseco. I wish I could have helped you get those 38 home runs to reach 500. You stopped at 462. Perhaps baseball stopped you, you claim at times. And Mr. Schilling, even though you did it to my Yankees, you're still my hero. <laughs> That's who you are. you are. You are not just normal, regular people. It's not the kids who look at you alone. That's the excuse we use. This autograph is for my son. It's for me. <laughs> I already signed up for Major League Game Day Audio for my computer. I already brought my first 25 packs of baseball cards for this year to add to the closet full of baseball cards that I have. Mr. McGuire, I'll never sell your rookie card. I'll leave it to my children and my grandchildren because you're heroes. There's no price on my love of this game. And so I hope that when you leave here today and think about it tomorrow and the next day, that you don't think of us as another <coughs> legislative committee. You think of us as no different than the people you see in the stands. We're baseball fans who love this game and we're terrified of what could happen to it. I don't like the fact that you're here. I don't like to see the breakup of the Bash brothers in front of me. I don't like the fact that Mr. Sosa hasn't smiled that famous smile. I don't like the uneasiness of all of you today. You shouldn't be here. Circumstances put you here. Please save the game. Without this game, this country is in deep trouble. And I'd like to yield now to Mr. Waxman. I, I thank you for yielding to me. I, I, that was a very uh, eloquent uh, plea, and I thank you for it, because you speak on behalf of so many of us. But Mr. Schilling, I just want to raise something that just came to my attention and read you some quotes that were attributed to you which sound so different than what you said today. So uh, you'll be prepared for it in case somebody raises it later. Uh, this was from Sports Illustrated, June 2002. Schilling says that muscle building drugs have transformed baseball into something of a freak show. Quote, you sit there and look at some of these players and you know what's going on, he says. 
guys out there look like Mr. Potato Head with a head and arms and six or seven body parts that just don't look right. They don't fit. I'm not sure how steroid use snuck in so quickly, but it's become a prominent thing very quietly. It's widely known in the game. And then also, I know guys who use and don't admit it because they think it means they don't work hard. And I know plenty of guys now are mixing steroids with human growth hormone. Those guys are pretty obvious, end quote. Were those your quotes? And, yes. And you feel, um, don't, don't those quotes seem to indicate you've been, you thought that, at least when you gave them, that uh, uh, there was a widespread use of steroids with some people because you could see it? I think we saw it as a problem. I, I think that any player looks at, at anybody uh, on the field as, as they gave themselves a competitive advantage by cheating as a problem. You don't think this is inconsistent with your statements today? No, I, no, I think I, I, I said those are my quotes. I, I, I made those quotes, and I think I said earlier today there were some quotes I've made in the past referring to some of those where I think I grossly overstated the problem uh, due to being uninformed and unaware. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And let me just thank all of you. It's been a long afternoon uh, for you. This has been very helpful to us, and I think this could be very helpful. Hopefully the owners, uh, management, uh, and the union are listening to this as well. Uh, we have a lot of different perspectives up here. We are the elected representatives of the people. And I think we share that perspective, uh, which is a little different from being a player or in management. Um, but this has been very helpful for us. Uh, I just appreciate the willingness of all of you to step forward. This has been, I think, a victory in itself. We look forward to continuing to work with you. We wish all of you good luck on the field uh, this year as, as the season begins as well. And I'm going to release this panel. Thank you very much. Take a five minute recess. Stay healthy. Thank you. Oh, man. You took good luck. Nothing. Congratulations. Thank you very much. get everybody seated. Um, we're going to now recognize the fourth panel. We have Commissioner Alan H. Seeley of Major League Baseball. Uh, Commissioner Seeley was not subpoenaed, called up and volunteered to, to come here today. And we, we appreciate that very much. He's accompanied by Mr. Robert Manfred, the Executive Vice President for Labor and Human Resources at Major League Baseball. 